Welcome to Orangeburg, South Carolina. You're watching ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. An all-important MEAC matchup from the Palmetto State. A couple of undefeateds in conference play going head-to-head. -head. Florida A&M taking on South Carolina State. As we say, hello and welcome in. He's the Howard University, former Howard University and NFL quarterback, Jay Walker. I'm Tiffany Greenwald. Today is loaded with significance as Buddy Pugh is on the brink of becoming South Carolina Carolina State's all-time winningest coach. Not only that, you add to it a very important and pivotal conference game today. When we talk about a historic HBCU program, which South Carolina State is, the very first African-American head football Division I coach was Willie Jeffries. He came from South Carolina State. He's the school's all-time winningest coach. Buddy Pugh has an opportunity to break his record today. And as a coach, there's nothing more meaningful than winning a game like that that's historic with the key crucial conference victory. There is a lot that sells this game today. In addition to that, quarterbacks. I know you like to talk about that. They're coming off of great performances, but we'll see two QBs with contrasting styles. Uh, absolutely. Starting off with Florida A&M signal caller Ryan Stanley. He's got the ability to make all the throws needed on the football field. But the key thing for Stanley, his decision making. He goes the right place with the football at key times in the game. Ten touchdowns, only two interceptions on the day. If he plays Ryan Stanley like football today, look for the Rattlers to have a great opportunity at walking away with a victory. Now the Bulldogs have a developed signal caller in Tyrese Nick. The most improved passer in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. He's having the ability now to hurt defenses with his arm, but make no doubt about it, he's the hardest running person on this South Carolina State football team. When he gets it going, throwing the ball and running, he's a true dual threat quarterback. Had a score record five touchdowns in last week's win over Delaware State also picked up 105 yards on the ground Ryan Stanley also did his thing as well with four TDs so this one should be an interesting quarterback battle but again one of the big stories coming out of today's game Oliver Buddy Pugh in position to become the all-time winningest coach at South Carolina State currently sitting at 128 wins tied with Willie Jeffries for that top spot of Orangeburg, South Carolina native through and through. He's been through this program and four decades more than that here with the Bulldogs. The, the dean of all coaches in the Media Snap Athletic Conference, the longest tenure coach in the MEAC going against one of the um, young up and comers and Willie Simmons on the opposite sideline. Well, Willie Simmons in his second year of the Willennium taking it to Tallahassee and look, he brought a winning season to the capital city of Florida a year ago. Again, his team is off to a really hot start. Four and one overall, and as I mentioned, undefeated in the conference. This is all the makings, Jay. We've been talking about this game. We've been looking forward to this game, and I think black college football fans have as well. This is a must-see matchup this weekend. It is, and we talk about just the elder statesmen going against one of the young guns. Well, these are two contrasting football teams. South Carolina State notoriously likes to beat up on their opponent, play more physical, where you've got Florida A&M, a little bit more finesse with Willie Simmons as the head coach and the offensive coordinator. He likes picking apart defenses, and I know he's looking forward to the challenge as well. All right, George Webb feels it after this kickoff across the 20-yard line, and that's where the Rattlers will get going as Ryan Stanley, the fifth year signal caller for Florida A&M, is closing in on history as well. Could be the all-time leading passer for the Rattlers. And that's saying something. This is a story program, and we talked to Coach Simmons about Ryan Stanley. He said, hey, starting four years down here in Tallahassee is not an easy thing to do. He's gone through the ups and downs of the program and has an opportunity to be rewarded here on national television by becoming the school's all-time leading passer. 27 yards away from doing so. That would break Quinn Gray's record, so we'll keep an eye out on that. First play from scrimmage for the Rattlers. The handoff to Bishop Bonnet. Oh. Bonnet is Hello. not back. Hello. Welcome to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Thank you, Dwayne Nichols. What did I say? I gave you the scout report. For years, South Carolina State has been able to out-physical their team, and that's the reason why. You come into Orangeburg, you expect hard hits, even from back when I played, trying to string this outside, and Dwayne Nichols lowers the boom 
on Bishop Bonner. Richard, sophomore out of Lakeview, South Carolina, hometown of Darius Leonard. Second play, the handoff once more. Bonnet spins off and again hit hard and driven down into the ground. A pickup of one. To Kobe Durant was in there on the stop along with John L. Brown. Trying to establish control of the line of scrimmage early. The Bulldogs are playing throwback South Carolina State football. Hitting people all over the field. Well, that was one of the conversations that we had with both of the coaches that this game could potentially come down to who wins it in the trenches. And that offensive line for Florida A&M has to do a good job of not only protecting Ryan Stanley, but also opening up holes for Bishop Bonnet. And situations like this are key. Protection will be the key. Can South Carolina State disrupt the pocket? And Stanley just falls down on that snap as Jalen Spady, the center, starting for the Rattlers and not the way they would have wanted to start. A loss of 10 there that brings up fourth down. And you see the snap just never comes up, and Spady was a last-minute substitution at that center position there. And Stanley fortunate enough to get to recover his own fumble, give an opportunity to punt it away with one of the best punters in college football. First team AP All-American a season ago, Chris Fadul out of Tampa, Florida. For that area, and he gets it, boots it, a booming leg for him. On the return, South Carolina State is readying. And Robinson just near the 45-yard line. Well, Tyree Snick, we told you about him in the open. We'll get a good chance to look at him out of Johnston, South Carolina. Six passing TDs on the year. You said he's much improved in that throwing game. Oh, yeah, just as Delaware State, five touchdown passes a week ago. He's starting to get it going. Everybody knows he can run. He's got to work on his completion percentage, though. You see the rushing numbers there. If he can contribute the football and distribute it well, anywhere close to what he did last week, this offense becomes potent. LeBron Morris joins him in the backfield. Montrez Burroughs, man in motion, top of your screen. Watch out for him as Morris trying to find a little bit of running room. Didn't able, wasn't able to pick up anything there as DeMontre Moore was in on the stop. And that'll be the key. We know that South Carolina State has a huge offensive line led by right tackle Alex Taylor, 6'8", 310-pound NFL prospect. Florida and them, they rely on their speed, and their speed shows up on film when you watch them. They fly to the football. Nick decides to tuck it and run again. That's what he can do so well, but I think all eyes will be on him as the Rattlers defense will try to throw a lot of different looks at him today. Got to confuse him, and you see there, even when they had the right defense called, Nick was able to take something and pick up some positive yards, shorten the sticks on third down. This is well defense. Nowhere to go. He's bottled in, but look out. He turned on the Jets. And Terry Jefferson was the first man to get to him and grab that jersey. Third and seven now. And jumping off free sides play. were the Rattlers. Here's that free play and the incompletion, but it will likely go in favor of the Bulldogs. You can't afford to make these type of mistakes when you're on the road in conference play, playing a very good football team. Think about it. You go from third and seven, where they're probably not going to make it, to now you're giving them third and short. And by them crossing the 50-yard line, this becomes four-down territory. So early on, South Carolina State may have an opportunity to play aggressive here, taking advantage of the miscue by Florida a and 44-yard line is the line to gain for South Carolina State. Right there at the point of attack, and there's the defense of FAMU. Derek Mayweather, the junior out of Fort Worth, Texas, Texas, was the first to greet him, a loss of one. What a great job of timing the snap by Derek Mayweather. Coach described him as an old-school linebacker, run-stuffer. He finds a crease, shoots the gap, and makes a tackle for a loss. Huge play. Felt like he was due for a breakout year. And now fourth and three. Cliff Benjamin on to punt for the Bulldogs. Back to receive a Zenday Ray standing at just near the 10-yard line. Short punt, but takes a friendly Bulldog bounce inside the 10-yard line. 
and we'll step aside quickly after that 37 yard punt. We'll see you back here in Orangeburg. America's fastest network for iPhones. More for your thing. That's our thing. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. Well, interestingly enough, Jay, we talked about great quarterback play between these two teams, and yet neither has attempted a pass yet. But Ryan Stanley back on the field as the Rattler offense starts inside their own 10-yard line. And the first pass attempt, and incomplete on the outside to David Manigo. And I like that. Got to get him going. You know, you know, you're not going to win this football game if Ryan Stanley doesn't have a big day. Get him going, call a three-step drop, short pass, let him make a quick decision. Just a little bit inaccurate, but you want him to get the jitters out now. Whereas the more looks he sees of the South Carolina State defense, the more comfortable he will become. He was 22 of 32 last week for better than 300 yards in that win over North Carolina Central during homecoming. Bishop Bonnet was chipped on his way outside. And again, good team defense from the Bulldogs. They can continue to have that type of pursuit. And you see right away, Willie Simmons is saying, I think he recognizes early, we can't run north-south against South Carolina State. They're trying to spread the field east-west, sideline to sideline, looking for a crease. Simmons, the play caller for the Rattlers, now third and 11. I want to see if South Carolina State can disrupt the pocket with a three-man pass rush, or do they bring pressure from the outside? Look out for big number 91, Roger Perry. Instead, flinging it away was Ryan Stanley with pressure in his face, and just as you mentioned, Jay, yes, they were able to do so successfully. Yeah, they showed him a three-man look, but they had no intention of only rushing three defensive linemen at Ryan Stanley. They brought two linebackers and did a great job of shooting the gap. B.J. Davis... They're excited about young freshmen. Dare I say it? They say kind of reminds him of a little bit of Darius Leonard, which will be scary for the rest of this conference. And Fadul back on the field this time out of his own end zone. Gets it away near pressure from the Bulldogs, but this one falls in the hands of Burroughs. And Burroughs still on his feet until he's dragged out of bounds. So great field position, starting field possession on the second drive for South Carolina State. Taking away one of Florida A&M's best weapons, which has been Chris Padula. We talk about the ability to change the battle of field position. Well, Padula with a nice kick, but an even better return by Demontres Burroughs. Well, Burroughs is a guy who's been all over the field, a senior for this group, and he's really stayed through the highs and lows of this program with his head coach, Buddy Pugh, who's, you know, seen some good days and some bad days, but now they're on the uptick. And I will tell you something about Burroughs. He stands out on film. He can play. His senior year, he's been lighting up defensive secondaries. Nick with pressure in his face, able to get away from a few defenders, but not able to outrun Marquise Bell. Bell, a guy that Willie Simmons and this staff really high on, a Juco transfer, and he can do everything. He's that dude. They love him. I said, how do you know he's an All-American? He's only been on campus for about four weeks, he said, because he is that good. Highly recruited out of high school, went to community college, at Coffeeville Community College, one of the legendary junior college programs in the country. And has made an impact on Tallahassee right away. Second and 11, and thus far, it's been a good defensive battle between these two teams. Nick trying to find his man on the outside. He targeted Shaq Davis. Davis, one of those freshmen that Buddy Pugh was really excited about, the incomplete pass, and Eric Smith was there on the coverage. You talk about excited about Shaq Davis. I've never heard Buddy Pugh get that excited about an offensive play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this school does defense, but he said Shaq Davis, 6'5". Eleven yards to get here on this third down as neither defense has given up much. Got to work and earn everything here today in this pivotal conference matchup. 
Nick surveying the field with time and now rushing out. Stutter steps and he's brought down by Elijah Richardson. Richardson in on the tackle, fifth year senior out of Port St. Lucie, Florida. Decision time here. I think you go for it. I think you're a little bit out of field goal range. And Nick did just enough to pick up some yards to put you in position to go for it on fourth down. So, Jay, if you can believe it, it's just over eight and a half minutes into this game and already a big decision and a big play here from Orangeburg. Four of six on fourth downs this season for the Bulldogs. And right there and absolutely nowhere to go as Tyrese Nick could not avoid the rush. The white jerseys kept coming his way. Isaiah Land was right there with him. The speed of Florida A&M defensively is giving the offensive line from South Carolina State trouble. They cannot protect their quarterback. As good an athlete as he is, you see him slicing in red jerseys on the ground. Not a good sign up front for South Carolina State. Turnover on downs and for FAMU, they have to look at how they get going on offense. Six plays thus far, negative 10 yards. Once they get it going, they're going to get it going in a hurry. And I still think I'm forcing the passing game right now with Ryan Stanley. Throw the football, unleash your weapon. Stanley tries to go for Manigo and almost picked off that one just off the hands of Manigo. Cornelius Walker almost had it off the deflection. And you have to do it. This is one of those games where Stanley may have to throw it 45, 50 times. It's going to be that hard to run. Throw the football there and good coverage in the secondary. And almost a good play by Cornelius Walker. He's been able to come up with that tip ball for the interception. Three receivers to the top of your screen. Stanley looking to his right and going back left once more. David Manigo and pinballed and still holds on to the football across midfield and a first down. And that's confidence in your quarterback. Same look, same defense, but this time Stanley anticipated a little bit sooner, able to thread that needle for the big first down completion. A 21 yard catch keeps this drive going for the Rattlers. As Ryan Stanley, we mentioned inching in on becoming the all-time leading passer in terms of yards for Florida A&M. Quick sling out once more to the left side. Dwayne Nichols is there to stop David Manigo from going too far. That was a huge play. It's going to show up as a small completion, but they brought the cornerback blitz from the weak side. Stanley saw it, got rid of the ball right away. Instead of taking a sack, able to get a completion for five-yard pickup. And that's one of the things Willie Simmons talked about, that he's been able to make better decisions as he's matured from the quarterback position. Pitch out to Devon Kendrick, and Kendrick with not much room to run. Jacoby Durant was right there, and trotting off the field oh, is man. Robert Kraft. We thought we'd see a little bit more of him, but I have a feeling we'll be calling his name throughout this broadcast. He will. That there is, he's, he's tall and 6'4", but still behind. He is 6'6", 420 pounds of grown man. <laughs> and you know what, folks? He's not... It's not like body fat. He, he, he's put together. Oh, no, he's solid for sure. This completion puts him over the top, but this one is whistled dead after it. I think his knee was down, but that does it. Ryan Stanley now the all-time leader in career passing yards, surpassing Quinn Gray, who recruited him out of high school. Congratulations to Ryan Stanley, and I'm going to throw a shout-out to I know his quarterback coach. So I'm going to give a shout-out to Ryan Collins, <laughs> former quarterback, competitor of mine. He trained Ryan Stanley. Congratulations to those two for getting it done. Job well done. Now let's see if he can go out here and get the W. Yeah, got just him. To the bottom of his screen, and he's got a man wide open, but hung up there a little bit too long, and the pass broken up. Great recovery in that secondary for the Bulldogs. Oh, Ryan Stanley, this is one you missed. Got a call like I see it. This was great separation by the slot receiver. Let this ball go, and you'll see he's behind the secondary. Not, 
when you get a safety that far in front of you, and there was a guy that was deeper than him that was the intended target that I thought he saw late. Well, Stanley now with 7,384 yards. That is a program best. We'll see what he's able to add to today. Gets the ball away quickly as pressure coming up the middle. He just gets rid of it now, third and ten. Well, for Stanley, coming up from Pembroke Pines, Florida, which is getting closer to that South Florida area, making his way to the panhandle, and is really coming to his own in Tallahassee. He's seen a number of different head coaches, but Willie Simmons, who is a former quarterback himself at Clemson, was able to really take him under his wing. Stanley stays in tough. Kendrick is right there. Devon Kendrick able to pick up the first down, and the Rattlers keep going. This is how you play quarterback, right? You, you can show me some guys that can throw the football, but I want the guys going to stand in tough and deliver a catchable ball with the, with the blitzing linebacker coming. You know, they say he stared death in his face. He knows he's going to get hit. Watch this. That guy's got a beat on him all the way. I'm still going to deliver the throw to my running back check down. And he picks up the first down. That's playing the position the right way. When I was young, I would do that. But now I would have got rid of the ball early. But he's playing hungry. When you're hungry, when you're trying to get a big victory and you're trying to impress some potential NFL scouts and that are out there, you're willing to take those types of sacrifices on your body. Under five to go here in Orangeburg. The Rattlers driving into the red zone, trying to put some points on the board. The handoff to Azende Ray, and Ray continuing to stay on his feet inside the five. And one of those speed guys that we heard about coming in who can just make you miss. We talk about going sideline to sideline. Ray's the speed. They want to get him on the perimeter, but it was a fantastic job by the left tackle, Jalen Brayboy. Sealing his block on the edge. Take a look at the block right there on the edge. Once he seals him, then you've got a big play. Pickup of 10 yards and now first and goal for Florida AM. Just throws this one away. May have gotten out of off the hand of Stanley, so that'll bring up second down. Bruce Johnson also trying to apply some pressure. The problem you have with Florida A&M and you're relying on running the football, you know, sideways, east-west a little bit, when you get down here on the two or three-yard line, you have to be able to find a crease. You don't want to run sideways when you're down here inside the five-yard line. And they've been dinged up a little bit at that run-backer position, so they don't necessarily have the big bruiser that you're looking for. Terrell Jennings would be perhaps the closest thing to it. Bonded in the backfield, Stanley finds his man and touchdown! Xavier Smith on the score. He had the go-ahead touchdown catch last weekend in homecoming, and once more he's able to put the Rattlers on the board. Yeah, just a little rub route, send him in motion, see if you can get leverage, and once he outflanks the defensive back, that becomes a touchdown. A little bit late getting there was Jalen Barr. Got caught up in the wash. Nice throw, nice catch, nice drive, Florida A&M. Ali on for the extra point attempt. And it is good. You mentioned the drive, Jay. 14 plays, more than four minutes gone by, and the three-yard touchdown catch from Xavier Smith as the Rattlers on the board on the road. Stick. Get the most from your amazing new iPhone 11 Pro on AT&T, America's fastest network for iPhones. More for your thing. That's our thing. South Carolina State's marching 101, trying to get the fans inside. Oliver C. Dawson back in this one as a big touchdown and an historic drive for Ryan Stanley. And the Rattlers picking up a score the lead here on the road and i would say south carolina state you got a problem he kind of made that look easy he made some nice throws the offensive line was able to protect them 
Wide receivers were running open. Offensively, the Bulldogs need to get it going in a hurry. Wolverine picks it inside the five. A lot of room up ahead of him, and Wolverine with a solid return, and penalty flags come flying out at the end of that play. A 37-yard return for Wolverine. Rory Bernard and his crew discussing it. We'll get the call just shortly. When you see the referee try and drop that flag at a certain yard line, he's trying to let you know where he saw the infraction occur. And probably be against the Bulldogs. So that block in the back will push the Bulldogs back. And the gate a huge return. Yeah. That was a nice return by Vereen. Did you see you see a little football one on one? I talked to him. You saw the official come in from 18 yards away and he was talking. He picked up his flag, was like, I was trying to throw it to the 20. It was a yard or two short. He set it from the 20. Then it becomes half the distance. That's why they had the ball in the 10. Jay, you've been going to officials camp? I'm getting better at it. Right. <laughs> I'm getting better at it. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green here okay. with you from Orangeburg, South Carolina. The Bulldogs trying to get something going mm. on offense. Nice move there by Wolverine. We saw him on the return. And good for 18 yards. I would say we talked about Nick running the football, but he's got some wide receivers. I watched them play. Burroughs is special. Vereen, we saw what he can do. And Shaq Davis is who they rave about. If he can get the ball to those guys in open space, tough day on the defensive secondary and the run up ahead a pickup of a few that'll bring up second and seven Terry Jefferson in on the stop well this has been a solid start to the season for South Carolina State coming in at three and one fresh off the win over Delaware State the handoff up the middle for just a little bit more nearing the 35 yard line. Yeah, talk about NFL prospects. I talked about Alex Taylor a little bit earlier, but 6'8, 310, and he's got the ability to reach. He was a basketball player coming out of high school, basketball, football, went to go play football at Appalachian State, decided to come to South Carolina State because he wanted to play basketball. And now he's playing football again, and NFL scouts are drooling at that size. Already got a senior bowl invite, does Alex Taylor. Two-time yak defensive lineman of the week. The pitch out to Morris, and Morris able to get up the first down. This is option football. South Carolina State used to run the option with a guy named Marvin Marshall, but when you're going to run the option, you always option off the end man of the line of scrimmage. The hard part is identifying who's the end man on the line of scrimmage. It was Elijah Richardson. Hold him, hold him, hold him, then pitch. Good job of running the option by Tyrese Nick. First and ten, they try to go at it once more. This time the ball comes loose, and it looks like it's recovered by FAMU. Marquise Bell was the dude who laid the hit, jarred the ball loose, and coming up with it, FAMU. DeMontre Moore comes up with it, but Coach Simmons said that guy Bell can play. <laughs> Called him an All-American right away, said he's just a ball hawk, and he comes up and delivers a blow. They run the same play with the option, but you see number five, he knows he's responsible for the running back. Shoulder pad on football, first down, Rattlers. We'll be back with more from Orangeburg. We've got a good one brewing here in the Palmetto State. Florida A&M back in Bulldog territory after that fumble recovery, and that's where we'll see the Rattlers offense get going once more. 148 to go in this first quarter. FAMU on top, 7-0. One-on-one -on -one coverage across the board. Get the ball to one of your playmakers. They like Xavier Smith, who 
was able to catch that touchdown. There goes the my big off to <laughs> Terrell Jennings and Robert Crouch is there. So we got a chance to actually talk about him in on a play, Jay. Yeah, look at him. He don't run the football when he's in the game. That's what he's in there for, to stop the run. You'll see you can't miss it right here in the middle of the screen when they have the pile. His job is just to stand up body. You see all the white jerseys trying to move him. Gets low, makes the tackle. That's what a run stuff is supposed to do. When we were talking with his D-line coach, David Blanchard, said kind of reminded you of uh, Vince Wolfer a little bit? Yeah, it's just going to take space. It's going to take space. And one thing about Vince Wolfer, whenever he wasn't out of breath, <laughs> he was a difference maker. <laughs> and again, nowhere to go in this running game. has just not been able to get kick-started. Bishop Bonnet was wrapped up very quickly. I think they have to continue to run the ball to the outside. I really don't think you try to gash South Carolina State with their defensive front, their prowess, how firm and physical they can be. They have to run off tackle. Look at this. Big fella Crouch is going to get an opportunity to pass rush. He doesn't see many pass rush opportunities. Let's see if he can collapse the pocket. And you see from that graphic, FAMU has relied heavily on that pass game just under – 100 yards rushing. They're trying to get a little bit more balance. Stanley right there to Xavier Smith. Smith able to hold on to the football. Spins off and inside the red zone once again. That's how you play quarterback position. If they want to play a type of cover two, you've got your best receiver running down the middle. We call it middle of the field open. Attack. Moving quickly, the snap off just before the end of the first quarter. Bishop Bonnet up ahead, a pickup of about six, and that'll do it from the first frame here in Orangeburg, Bishop South Bonnet, Carolina. Big Mia matchup between Florida AM and South Carolina State. The Rattlers up 7-0. Eleven Pro on AT and T, America's fastest network for iPhones. More for your thing. That's our thing. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. We're at the home of the Bulldogs here at South Carolina State, Florida A and M. Leading 7-0, Willie Simmons wanting to see his crew put up another score on this Bulldogs defense. An all-important road conference game for the Rattlers. Four wide receivers set instead. Stanley holds on to it, and Tyrell Goodwin just falls on top of him. You can tell they're struggling running the football. When, when you've got to have your quarterback who is so valuable to you as a passer, doing quarterback draws down here in the red zone, now, that's not what you want to do. you got running backs in there that are supposed to get you the hard, tough yard that shouldn't be coming from Ryan Stanley. I don't think we're going to see that again. Well, again, uh, we talked about them being a little bit banged up. Uh, Henrillis moved over to defense. Eddie Tillman is out for the year. So they're pretty thin in that position. Stanley rolling to his right, cuts back upfield, just gets it away, oh. and off along the sideline nobody's going to catch bj davis he's got plenty of real estate and just like that we're all back in this ball game bulldogs with the score wow 88 yards on the big six and it's youth day here at oliver c dawson stadium and they're dancing they say B.J. Davis is little Darius Leonard. And look at the football instincts. But here, Ryan Stanley wishes he just would have thrown the ball away. He gets turned around trying to get the ball out there to the flat late. And B.J. Davis with the athleticism to finish the play and gives the Bulldogs an opportunity to tie up this football game. We're even at seven apiece. B.J. Davis take it to the house. says, I'm going to take, take it, it to the, the house. house, baby. Take it to the house. Take it to the house.
we'll talk about a shift in momentum. Rattlers in the red zone with an opportunity to score, but instead they hand it right over to the Bulldogs. That championship belt, B.J. Davis hoisting it high for the first pick six of the season for Oliver Buddy Pugh's defense. And the kickoff on the return. The speedster from the five, taking off, flags coming out. And this one could come back as Marcus Williams on the return. He's their fastest guy on the team. But we see a penalty marker on the field. He's one of those guys who's a straight up burner out of South Florida, Miami. And they use him to make an impact to stretch out the defense over the top. You've got speedy guys, put them back there in the return game. Well, that's a way to answer, you know, depending upon what this call is, but still any kind of lift that you can find to give your team a little boost after that deflate. I guess that would be just as deflating. You <laughs> negate a 62-yard kickoff return from Marcus Williams. And with that type of speed, which I saw there, I want to see him on some offensive sets. I, I see why you put him out there at X and see who can run with him. That was some legitimate Florida speed. Oh, yeah. They say he runs 10-3, 10-4 in the 100. We'll see how Ryan Stanley responds the handoff here. They run for a couple, but just not much success on the ground, Jay. It is not there. Florida A&M running the football, 11 attempts, four yards. 11 attempt, four yards. That's like four more yards than I rush for in this game. <laughs> We're not even playing. They are having trouble on the offensive line. South Carolina State is controlling the line of scrimmage with their interior defensive linemen. And that's why I said Ryan Stanley's going to have to be the guy that's either going to win this football game for you or lose it because I don't think they're going to have the ability to have much success running the football. Into backfield now for Stanley as Bonnet moves in motion. Quickly swinging it out to him, just trying to get him in space and opportunity because he's got some speed as well. But again, the Bulldogs not fooled. And I like the play selection. That's nothing but just an extended handoff because when you can't run the ball, just swing him out the backfield, dump it off at the swing route, pick up three yards there. But that just lets you know the frustration right now starting to set in for head coach Willie Simmons, the offensive coordinator, with the lack of a running game. And that's big boy Robert Crouch on the ground. Crouch, we mentioned, senior out of Johnsonville, South Carolina. He's we'll step aside quickly. We'll see you when we return. iPhones. More for your thing. That's our thing. Crouch walked over to the sideline noticeably in pain. He's getting that right knee checked out. Let's go back to that play. Yeah, and this is Crouch right here. Watch him as the play develops as he gets pushed in the back and tries to jump over somebody to avoid contact. You will see right there the right leg just kind of buckles underneath him. Ouch. Let's hope he's okay. Yeah. Back to play on the field. Stanley goes back to pass and a dangerous one. A late flag comes out just near where the receiver was standing. Pass interference. Defense, number 14. The ball will be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic, first down. Let me say this, Jay. The number two that I have on the roster for Florida a and is the true freshman quarterback, Cameron Sack. Could he have been flanked out as a receiver here as you see that pass interference call off of De Kobe Durant?
Stanley with the hand draw. Kendrick. Kendrick gets some good positive yards among the best runs today we've seen from the Rattlers. Yeah, finally able to get something positive in the running game up the middle. Maybe that has something to do with Robert Crouch being on the sideline, the run stuffer for South Carolina State. But any type of running that they can get going, running game, really help out the quarterback, Ryan Stanley. Kendrick, pick up of six there. Four to go. FAMU averages about 28 points a game, third best in the MEAC against one of the more stingy defenses in the conference. Playcock winding down just to one, and Kendrick once again finds a defender. He's carrying him on his back, a pickup of two. I'll tell you what, that was a whole lot of shifting and audibling and trying to play chess for just a simple handoff run for a two-yard pickup. However, Sam, you will take it as they get it. Any type of positive yard that they can get in the running game is a small victory for them. So fourth and seven on third downs today for Florida a &M. Smith in motion. And the pressure coming from the outside, but Stanley able oh. to get away. And then tripping over his own feet as the receiver, his tight end, Kamari Young. That would have been a first down and more. Instead, Chris Fadul will trot onto the field. And it was another great job of playing yeah. quarterback by Ryan Stanley. Your back is to the defense, which you hate as a quarterback. Get the head around quickly. Defender there, still able to get the football off. But unfortunately, the freshman, Young, not able to keep his balance, hold his feet. And in comes Chris Fadul. Fadul, who has made a living pinning teams inside the 20. We'll see what he could do here on this punt. Demontres Burroughs just fair catching it. And this one is a touchback. So very close. 47 yards on the punt for Fadul. If yeah, Fadul's looking like, how could you guys not down that ball? It bounced, but actually it was kind of poor play by Florida A&M on special teams. That ball really didn't go into the end zone. As you see it, they went too far, and they let their momentum carry them into the end zone, trying to make the catch. And didn't realize where he was on the football field. And Coach Simmons, when we talked to him, he said, if I have fourth and short, fourth and two, I'm punting the ball. I'm letting Christopher Duell do what he does well, which is win the battle of field position. That would have been a great opportunity had they been able to pin him on the one-yard line. Instead, special teams doesn't do their job, and South Carolina State gets the ball back with decent position. Well, Tyree Snick, after that five-touchdown performance last week, He's been kind of quiet here. He tucks it and runs. Good enough for the first down, and he's brought down by Marquise Bell. Oh, that should be a late hit. Oh, wow. No flag coming out. Good for a dozen. Yeah. I mean, you, how about this for you? Tiffany said, I'm being quiet. Okay, well, how about this? Nick says, I'm going to show you what I can do. And good open field tackle by Marquise Bell. But look at the late hit there by number 75 falling on the pile. That's a stick back right there. Good hit delivered once more by Bell. Bell has been all over the field in this first half. Again, it was a guy that really Simmons said, keep your eye on. And he's playing this physical style football that we're used to seeing South Carolina State defense play. Nick misses his man, Demontres Burroughs. Now third and six. Well, the first three drives for South Carolina State has netted 29 yards. This drive, they've been able to gain a little bit more than that, more than half of that. And the, you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage. Pick a matchup that you like and get it to one of your receivers. Again, Nick trying to avoid pressure, able to get it away, but Rodriguez Thomas could not hold on to it. 
it's a quick three and out. Yeah, and a little disappointing three and out because normally if you're going to play, you don't want to play man-to-man coverage versus a mobile quarterback because you have to turn your back to the pocket. But give credit to the Florida a and defensive line. They've been able to contain Tyrese Nick in the pocket and frustrate him. My bad. It wasn't a three and a half. I forgot Nick did pick he up did, that yeah, first Remember down. that? He tried to yeah. pride you. Yeah, he did. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I would be licking my chops. Mm -hmm. If you come out and play, they're playing straight cover one, we call it. Safety high, man-to-man, -man, across the board. All you have to do is just get the ball out of your hand, your wide receiver or the quarterback take off and run. Line drive kick, Azende Ray with the fair catch. We'll step aside and come back here for this big MIAC matchup from Orangeburg. Using new iPhone 11 Pro on AT&T, America's fastest network for iPhones. More for your thing. That's our thing. Willie Simmons in his second season as the head coach of Florida A&M and his team is duking it out right now in this MEAC battle. Well, Simmons has kind of returned home, but he first started out at Clemson as a quarterback, graduated in three years, also played an additional year at the Citadel, and then moved on. He had a coaching opportunity at Middle Tennessee State, Alcorn State, before taking over as the head coach at Prairie View A&M, led the Panthers to three winning seasons. And then back in 2017, he was hired as the head coach, taking over for Alex Wood. And again, the Gadsden County native is happy to be back in the panhandle. One thing I can say about Willie Simmons, wherever he coaches, he puts points on the board. And that's the key. When he went to Prairie View and all of a sudden took that program to new heights and started becoming an offensive power in the conference, then came to Florida A&M and had an immediate impact with a 6-5 and five finish, 5-2, five and two, and a little bit of a disappointing 5-2 and two finish because they lost those last two conference games in the year, which knocked them out of the Celebration Bowl. But good thing I like about them, their expectations again, once again, in Tallahassee. Yeah, it snapped a, a seven-year losing streak up on the highest of seven hills with that 6-5 and five record last year, off to a great start. Once again, you know Ryan Stanley and this team would love to deliver a win for him on Coach's birthday. It would be a great birthday present. But <laughs> until they figure out a way to get this running game going, they're so completely one-dimensional. That's been the biggest snag in there. Ryan Stanley has thrown some good passes, but that pick six is the reason that allowed South Carolina State to tie up this football game. Third and long for the Rattlers. Stanley looking down his man and overthrows his intended target, Azende Ray. What did you, you call for a &M? You said it broke a streak of uh, some terminology. The highest of what? Seven Hills. The highest of Seven Hills? Is that what they call for a &M? Yes, they it, oh. ta the school actually sits on the highest of seven hills in Tallahassee. Ah, yeah. Never knew that. See, look at that. Never a little education that. there for you, Jay yeah. Walker. You know what happens with those Highwood Bison and their degrees. I'm not, I'm not I don't know why sure. you would have to count the seven hills. I mean, <laughs> I don't think of Tallahassee as being hilly. It is very hilly. Oh, oh that one blocked. Good special teams play by the Bulldogs. Picked up and returned for the touchdown. Kalik Anthony got a hand on that one. Jaden Brunson able to run it into the end zone. So we're seeing the different phases come through for the Bulldogs. First their defense and now special teams. Special teams and if the offense ever gets it going, it'll be a long day for Florida a and and Wow, there were several jerseys. That was a punt block. They were selling out for the block, which makes sense. Don't try to set up a return against a punter that leads the nation in punt yards. They came after him and were rewarded with the pump block for six. The belt, not only for defense, special teams getting some love as well. Jaden Brunson in to put the Bulldogs up. Like to stay out 
the men of Omega Sci-Fi hopping in the end zone as South Carolina State takes the lead for the first time today. Jaden Brunson with that recovery for a touchdown. And let me tell you, defense and special teams coming through right now. It's part of the aspects of the game you have to have, particularly if you think you're a championship quality team. And South Carolina State thinks they may have a championship quality team. The defense seems good enough. The offense going to and a big play on the special teams. A short kick there, and Zende Ray turned around a little bit, and then just a number. There's a whole pile just came in and converged in on Ray. And he's getting a little scrappy down there. But I like those cues that were hopping. Yeah. Are they the only fraternity that hops? Like I think I they mean, like have the trademark. Others may do it, but they Omega the, Sci-Fi, yeah, they hop. Yeah, when you see them hop, you know, like Malcolm Butler was doing it in the uh, locker room. Malcolm Jenkins. Jenkins, I'm yeah. sorry. That's another group that, see, I don't know what they're doing. They're spinning. But then once you start to see the hop, I'm assuming that's cute. Yeah. I'm know, assuming the cute. Can't tell by the color. But If Darius Leonard is is watching, you know, he's oh, got to love, big it love too. The former Bulldogs linebacker now with the Indianapolis Colts last year's NFL Rookie of the Year on defense. So Ryan Stanley trotting back onto the field after a pretty solid start for the Rattlers. A couple of big plays. And again, the Bulldogs defense starting to fill and pick up that momentum. Roderick Perry was right there. The junior out of Raleigh, North Carolina. A loss of three. Yeah, Roderick Perry ended up here at South Carolina State as a referral from Black College Hall of Fame quarterback Doug Williams. Comes here and they say he's probably the most talented of our defensive line. Very versatile, can play interior D line as well as defensive end. Stanley with one on one coverage nice on the throw. outside, and David Manigo, way to go up and get it and bring it in. It's a guy who they feel like has good ball skills continuing to develop on the outside. 17 yard pickup. Nice throw. The timing, that's what you call that back shoulder throw. And a throw like that is all about the timing and the rhythm. And you can tell there's a little connection between Stanley and Manigo. Get rid of this football. Look at that location. Run downfield, turn your right shoulder, and I'm going to drop a dime on you. So just over six minutes to go in this second half. Stanley once again trying to find his man. And an ill-advised pass right in the hands of Dakobe Durant. Couldn't hold on to it. But again, a very dangerous throw. Yeah, it should have been picked off there. They always say there's a reason why they play cornerback and not wide receiver. Cornerbacks normally don't catch as well as a wide receiver there. Well, coming into today's game, Stanley only has thrown two interceptions on the season. You go back to that 88-yard interception return for a touchdown. That evened it up, and then that pump block for return. Trying to go to that left side of the field once again. It's Xavier Smith, and Smith picking up the first down. Xavier Smith, how do they describe him? Unbelievable. And you saw what makes an unbelievable receiver. The guy that doesn't go down with the first would-be tackler can run great routes, get in and out of breaks quickly, and showing you something there while he's their go-to wide receiver for the Rattlers. He led the team in receptions and yards a season ago, and he's come through with some clutch touchdowns late in that win over Southern and again over North Carolina Central last weekend. The ball was there and just through the hands of Kamari Young. So second and ten for the Rattlers, and the coaches have talked about just the type of leader that Ryan Stanley has developed into, not only on the field, but off the field as well. As a player that the guys really rally around, they listen to him. They don't mind going out and doing battle with him week in and week out. That should be a penalty. That was an illegal shift. 
Stanley throws that one away. And this is going to call a little mental error. They're going to call this an illegal shift. We'll await the call from Rory Bernard. Offense, two men in motion prior to the snap. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, third down. So, so here's what happened. Take a look. You're going to see a second flinch here. While and when he comes in motion, you Thank have you. to stop. It was one of these two guys that did the flinch earlier. We'll see it as we run it. You'll see them readjust right there, that move, and the, the motion guy starts to move too soon without stopping. Had he come to a stop position, then it wouldn't have been an illegal shift. But because he never came set, you can't have two guys running in motion at the same time. Trips to the bottom of your screen. Stanley looking to the sideline to get direction and then calls a timeout. When you look at this Florida AM team who was picked to finish third in the MEAC behind the two time defending conference champion, North Carolina AT Aggies. And then, of course, their in-state rival, Bethune-Cookman, coming in to finish at second in the preseason. We saw the Wildcats earlier this week. They took on North Carolina Central. What kind of race do we expect towards the end of the season, Jay? Well, I'm going to say if it comes down to the Florida Classic, then I'm betting on Bethune-Cookman <laughs> because they've won the last eight, right? They won the last eight. But uh, depends on what happens here. A lot will go determine what happens in that race. I mean, Bethune Cookman jumped out. They've taken care of their business. They've won three early contests, which is great. But this has been the first big test game that we've had in this season right now. Florida and them taking on South Carolina State, two teams that are ranked up there in the top ten in HBCU football. And but like we always say, everybody's chasing AT. The question everybody asks me where I go is, who do you think can knock off AT? And that's uh that's the, the million dollar question. AT with a bye week. We'll get some rest. They got a big back by the name of Jermaine Martin, who's a bad man. Third and ten, eight plays on this drive. Ninth one on the way. Stanley receives the snap, stands in the pocket, has a man wide open. It's Smith. Smith once again. And again, they talk about just the great route runner he is, the wonderful receiver he is. He is an all-in-one package, that pickup of 27. Uh, my coach used to say, mm, sweet. He ran a route that we'll show you probably after this play because they're going to hurry up get to the line of scrimmage. That was an NFL-style route. They say he's got the goods. They target him once more, Xavier Smith. I'll mean, oh, get a little chippy down there. B.J. Davis in the face. Take a look. Take a look at this. Uh, he's going to be your slot receiver. Watch him spin him around. You're going to see the guy there defending him in the break. By the time we come out the frame, that dude is eight yards away. He spun him around like a top. That was a big time corner route by Xavier Smith. They don't say good. They say great when it comes to route running for Smith. This one-on-one -on -one matchup, Manigo in the end Ooh, zone. That's, yeah, that's be penalty PI. coming out and throwing up his hands at the last minute was the defender for South Carolina State. Vernon Greer. Excuse me, DeAndre Daniels. I was wondering what took so long on that. There was a lot of contact the whole time the ball was in the air. Daniels was draped on him. Hold it. Defense, number 20, half the distance to the goal, automatic, first down. And the ball's in the air, he's all over him. Could make the question, but you see they call it holding. They just call pass interference. Holding is holding. Pass interference, it has to be a catchable ball. However, it's first and goal, right? Yes. I still don't know how Florida a is going to score. When, when your running game is being negated, they got to take some high risk reward type plays down here. They may try a jet sweep or something like that to the outside, but when the running game is not there, how do you score in these short yarded situations? 
Jennings is in the backfield. They hand it off to Terrell Jennings. Jennings, a downhill runner, and he's in for the score. So just when you thought, how are they going to do it? Been one-dimensional today, but the running game comes through to try to tie up this ball game. Yeah, and this was a great play schematically drawn up by Willie Simmons. I'm thinking, how can they score? You know they can't run straight at you. What do they do? They fake the jet sweep and give it to the dive man. Just enough daylight. See the reaction. When he comes across with that fake jet sweep that freezes the defense just long enough to allow the running back to find a crease to get into the end zone. The point after attempt from Ali. And it's good. We've got a tie ball game. Jennings, the true freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida. The four-yard touchdown run. And maybe that will help to establish the ground game for the Rattlers. Well, I'll tell you, just win, baby, win. You said that yeah, I earlier. Yeah, said that about Bethune Cookman. I didn't yeah. realize fans in the same boat. Close games, but at the end of the day, they've walked away with W's. They've yeah. all been very the close. The counts as a W. That's right. They've and I think you go W's. back to that Southern game. That was really the spark for this group. They had a season-ending loss, excuse me, season-opening loss to the University of Central Florida. And since that time, they've won four straight. But all those were close. I mean, Southern had the ball with an opportunity to score. North Carolina Central tried to come down there and ruin the Rattlers' homecoming. But winning games right now, and this would be a big test. So normally you say close losses help you because you can learn from them and you learn how to finish out a game and not give up and to close them out. But we'll see if that pays off for when you come in here playing a very game South Carolina State team on the road. Demontres Burroughs collecting that one, and Burroughs, big number one, up past the 40-yard line, but a little bit of laundry on the field. So we'll see who that goes against. The way it's been going, it's been against South Carolina State. Yeah. And they're getting some big returns. Hold Return team, number 16. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That one goes against Tim Ewing. And South Carolina State finds themselves not only in the hunt of this ball game, but in the conference overall. They're looking for perhaps a MEAC title. They could be in contention for it. Had won one since 2014, but Buddy Pugh closing in on history. Time for the most wins here at the school with Willie Jeffries at 128. The win would put him over the top today. Good battle going. Wolverine on the catch and sure tackling from the Rattlers. That was Elijah Richardson. And that's another one of those plays where schematically it was a great call. It was good execution by South Carolina State. But the speed of Elijah Richardson able to come up and negate a play that would have been a big play, possibly a first down and limited to just a three-yard game. Nick feels the pressure, avoids it being chased out, launches the ball, lets it go, and then that little push in the secondary from Bell, and you see the penalty flags on the field. There are a couple. I see three pieces of laundry on the field. I think one of them may be a late hit. Another one may be a hold. Take your pick. Yeah. For the big plays that we've had in this game, we've also seen it kind of slow down here late in the second quarter. I always think the three to four minutes going into the half are so important. How do you close out a half? With momentum or do you lose momentum? Two fouls on the play, both against the offense. Ineligible player downfield, offense. Number 50, that penalty is declined. Pass interference. Offense, number one, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. Wow, so that pushes South Carolina State back deep into 
their own territory. But like you said, Jay, this is a very important and crucial minutes in this first half. South Carolina State will get the ball coming out of the break. But I think they have to worry that the offense hasn't scored a point. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got to get it going. They've had the ball in pretty good field position a couple times. I just think Tyrese Nick needs to get it going one way or the other, either throwing the ball and completing some short passes to let these wide receivers go to work, or he has to do it with his legs. Okay. With, Number nine, five-yard penalty, second down. But for him to be the dual-threat weapon he is, he's been kind of, as you said, I want to say quiet. Mm -hmm. Hasn't made an impact yet. Too talented to do that. And then the mental miscues here for South Carolina State not helping their cause at all. Remember, they went on the road to Tallahassee last year and put up 44 against the Rattlers. Nick with the completion. Davis with the catch. And then quickly the stick button from Bell. Now this is one where if you're Marquise Bell, you had the big hit, but don't make a senseless penalty and give South Carolina State a first down with the late hit or unsportsmanlike conduct. But you saw Shaq Davis absolutely climb the ladder to go get that football. I didn't think this was a catchable ball. But watch him climb up behind him and go get it. And the stick, ooh, Marquise Bell, very fortunate. He made that tackle with the crown of his helmet. That is a, that's a no-no. Got away one there. Two and a half to go in this first half from Orangeburg. Nick finding his man on the outside. Waiting right there was Troy Hilton to tackle Demontres Burroughs. That brings up fourth down. And so now you still have time and perhaps pretty decent field position for Florida A&M to put some more points on before the half. Yeah, and I would take my time punting this football. Right now, I don't think Coach Simmons realized we can call a timeout, get this ball back with two minutes left. Instead, now you're going to get the ball back with about a minute 30. That 30 seconds difference could make a difference. I would have called the timeout once I saw the punt team come on the field. Instead, letting it go with eight seconds to go on the play clock. Zende Ray watches this one bounce favorably out of bounds. Well, coming up at the half, we've got Gimme Five for sure, but Coach Buddy Pugh currently tied with the former South Carolina State head coach, Willie Jeffries. We'll hear from him. He's always fun to talk to, Jay. You got to talk to Coach Jay. He's going to make you laugh, and he's going to make you smile, then he'll make you cry. But quality guy and glad to see him get all of his accolades and curious to what he has to say about Buddy Pugh potentially becoming the winningest coach here at South Carolina State. Pugh played for Jeffries while he was an offensive lineman here. Did you know, that, did you know that Coach Jay also coached at another HBCU in the conference? Yes, he did okay. for five years okay. at a uh, tiny school in Washington, D.C. <laughs> the pitch and catch is good to David Manigo. Good, job, good time here now for Florida and them to steal this lead going back into the half. And you have to like their chances of putting some points on the board with two timeouts. And Ryan Stanley, the senior quarterback, crosses midfield. Second and short. And just nowhere to go quickly, bottled up. And that defense once again coming in hard and fast. That was Wilson. And they continue to struggle to run the football. I thought they would come out just passing. Bombs away. Let Stanley try and put some points on before the half. Stanley is 14 of 26, 151 yards. A TD strike to go along with an INT. The handoff to Bonnet. Bonnet trying to work on the outside, but absolutely nowhere to go as Tyrell Goodwin was all over him, the senior out of Columbia. And South Carolina State does not call a timeout. So interesting, both teams willing to go in the halftime tie. I guess if you're Coach Jeff, Coach, sorry, Coach Pugh, you're saying I get the ball to start the second half, so we'll do our damage 
after we go in the locker room, try and make some adjustments. 30 seconds and counting here. Nobody deep for the Bulldogs. Good matchup here in this first half. I mean, it's giving us everything we thought it would be, Jay. First charge timeout of the half. Then the Correct. Right timeout. Second yeah. charge timeout. You know what I would half. have done in this situation? I would have called timeout, let them think I'm setting up for my offensive scheme, and then I would have put that pump block back out there. They've already blocked one punt. I would have gone after the punter again to see if we can come up with another one if maybe they haven't figured out what we've been doing to them with our special teams pump block. But who am I to question old Buddy Pugh's? <laughs> Forgotten more football than I'll ever learn. And he's been around this since he doesn't even seem phase. He's been in these type of content, contests for years. Just to catch our viewers up of how we got here, it was FAMU got on the board first. Touchdown catch from Xavier Smith. Then South Carolina State answered with two big plays on defense and special teams. A pick six and the plot, punt block return for a touchdown. And he was able to run it in, and that's how we get at 14 all, and that's likely where we will stand going into the locker room. This one bounces into the end zone with four seconds to go here in this first half. <laughs> the dude's like, that's the second time I've got it where the ball's bounced at the 10 and you all can't stop it from going in the end zone. For duel, we mentioned the All-American punter out of the Tampa Bay area of Lebanese descent. And he was also an excellent soccer player as well in high school. So now South Carolina State will trot back on the field and likely run this last play after that 52-yard punt. After the first 30 minutes, we still don't know who's the better team. It's still up in the air, and it seems like it's going to be a very exciting second half. And both teams go in the locker room, and this is where the great coaches earn their money. Halftime adjustments. How do they come out in the third quarter? It's been a good one so far as a big test in the MEAC. Florida A&M and South Carolina State all even at 14 here at the half. Welcome back to South Carolina State. Well, it's only fitting here at the half as we're at the home of one of the legends, Willie C. Jeffries, a tribute to one of the HBCU coaching legends. Historically, black colleges and universities around the country are known for producing some of the best talent to come through the college ranks and on to the National Football League. What many may not know is the fact that those talented student athletes were coached by legendary coaches who not only changed their lives, but helped change the landscape of college football. The Mideastern Athletic Conference is proud to document and showcase some of these football coaching legends, including today's feature on a man who was a pace setting coach at both the HBCU and predominantly white college levels. His name is Willie Jeffries. I believe uh, not, not the advent of uh, being the first uh, African-American head coach at a major university. I would think my contributions would be in the field of uh, graduation rates. We had a high graduation rate at South Carolina State, Wichita State, and Howard. And believe it or not, at all three locations, geographically, we got respect. So sometimes when you, you're trying to equal out uh, how you're going to uh, bring in different cultures into your daily lives, if you, just, if you do those three, and we also would do the three Fs, uh, faith, family, and good future, those were the things that, that carried me. 
I'd like to be remembered not by the trophies because they lose their luster. The cheering and applauding in the stands will cease and it all boils down to the person. You know, the College Football Hall of Fame, it ranks above all of those, but when you speak of home uh, at uh, South Carolina State, if you're able to get into that Hall of Fame, and from there to the MIA, our Conference Hall of Fame, those two I hold dearly. Honored to be sitting next to the legend, Willie Jeffries Field. That's pretty special as, uh, look, I got to give you some, some, some shout outs there, Coach Jeffries, because you look as good as you do now as you did in those coaching pictures when you were at South Carolina State, Wichita State, and Howard. Oh, thank you, Tiffany. That's, uh, you must be running for office <laughs> to say that. <laughs> but thank you so much. I've always been a, a workout uh, buff when, when most of the coaches went to lunch. I'd come right down here and run this track. We had a track in the stadium at that time, so I kept in shape pretty well. Coach Jeffries, you know, obviously everybody owes you the greatest respect out there. That's why I was clapping when you came on. Great piece there we saw. I don't think I've ever asked you this. What do you miss about coaching? I, I, miss, I miss the young men. I miss the young men because when you get up in the morning, you need to have something to go and do. Now I don't have that, but back then I had those young men that, and it was sometimes their exes would be better than your O's, but you coach the O's, uh, uh, build up your graduation rate, and to show them, because 80% of our boys, was, they were from a one-parent uh, home, and we, we were the daddies to those young men, and I miss that. In terms of when you look back and think about Donnie Schell and Harry Carson and Charger Dark, so many greats that have come through here, how proud do you feel to know that you had a hand in that? Well, I'm proud of all those guys, Tiffany. And you know, uh, sometimes they have not fully matured uh, academically and otherwise, but they could read, write, draw, and trace. That's what I was <laughs> concerned. And they could spell Bob backwards. So we, we, yeah, and we were able to get them going academically because I always told them if you get behind academically and you're not doing the proper thing, uh, you've got to build good habits. And those guys are Harry, Donnie, Robert Poche, Dexter Klinkscale, a guy we missed talking about. Those guys became great students, and uh, they were already good football players. Yeah, Coach Jay, you know what I talk about? The, the good old days of HBCU football, the game's changed a whole lot, and in a lot of cases for the better. But I remember when we come down here and play South Carolina State when y'all used to have a grass field. What did you do when a team like Howard or Florida a &M came in with all that speed? Well, tell our viewers what you used to do. Admit it on camera. Well, you had too much speed. First of all, the grass, we let it grow up <laughs> over your shoes. Be and bad. about 4 a.m., we had watered the field down. And then you would start the, the sprinklers slow. during the game. Yeah, and one night uh, we didn't know that it, it rained anyway, so it was a quagmire. <laughs> but, you know, um, I'm, I'm just so happy that you remember those days, Jay, because you know I told them we would blitz, but don't hurt him. Yeah, you said yeah, I was, I was in your corner. <laughs> 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 Lastly, Coach Jeffries, 19 seasons, a couple of stints here at South Carolina State. You helped this program garner a lot of success, but to watch then your player and Buddy Pugh being able to not only tie you, but a chance to break your record in all-time career wins. What does it mean to you? Oh, it means a lot to me. You know parents want their children to do better than they. And Buddy is one of mine. He, he's like a son, uh, and he majored in mathematics, so he's smart. The team was so bad when Buddy came here. Uh, one of the players threw his helmet at the coach, and that got intercepted. <laughs> but, but so that shows you what, how, what a great job Buddy has done with this football team, and I'm so happy for him. He's homegrown. He lives eight miles west of here, and he's happy. His wife, Josie, she's happy, and we're happy for Buddy because he deserves this. I broke somebody's record, and I hope that today that he breaks mine. We appreciate your time, the comedian, but also the legend as well. Willie Jeffries, thank you so much for joining us here at the half. Back with four when you return. When you return.
Welcome back to South Kakalaki, all tied at 14 between Florida A&M and South Carolina State as we say hello again, and it's everybody's favorite time of the broadcast, Jays, give me five. All right, we're on the campus of South Carolina State. Yeah, so hold on. These, these Bulldogs remember me. Okay. They saw that dude right there. They saw me put something on him. I teased David Blanchard all the time about one of the worst whoopings that Howard ever delivered to them was delivered by me and the boys. But let's talk about five things you need to know about South Carolina State. The football legend. The list goes on and on. There's 59 people that have gone on to the National Football League. You got three NFL Hall of Famers and Deacon Jones, Barry and Motley, Harry Carson. Today, NFL Defensive Rookie of Year, Darius Leonard. They play defense down here. They've been playing football for a long time. Number four, the Marching 101. Love the name. Love the name because when a Marching 100 is not enough, you have to have 101. That's plus one. They put on a good show. They're rocking the house right now. Number three, how about this? In today's landscape, we're going to go to number two with Carl McCullough. I'm going to give it up to Miss USA. Not too many colleges out there, period, can say they've produced a Miss USA. South Carolina State has produced a Miss USA. And coming in at number three, of course, Jim Clyburn, the congressman. So we had a chance to sit down with the legend. It's only fitting, Jay, that he tops your list. I got to say that. I'm just going to jump the gun. Uh oh, now it's Tiffany's Gimme Five? No, well, it's Jay's you know, Gimme Five, but we agree on that one. Number one, got to be number one because he was the first African-American coach at a Division I football program. Willie Jeffrey, synonymous with South Carolina State. It's a reason why he's the winningest coach in school history thus far. But Coach Jay paved the path for a lot of people to prove he could get it done. Coach Jay's always going to be number one when you talk about things you need to know about South Carolina State University. All right, looking at that one through five list, who makes it on the bubble? On the bubble, well, get a little upset here, but Claflin University. <laughs> right, Claflin University, I say that because I've never been to any two schools that are that closely connected. The AUC, the schools are close with Spelman and Atlanta, Spelman, Morehouse, and Clark Atlanta. Claflin and South Carolina State are separated by a fence. And in some places, it's a chain link fence. So these schools, they're synonymous. Sorry, State fan. You want to give me a hard time about it? Hit us up on social media, Black College Live. But you know I know what I'm talking about. Claflin founded in 1890, South Carolina State 1896. The court, the band, it's in full effect here from Orangeburg. Welcome back here to Oliver C. Dawson Stadium in Orangeburg, South Carolina. We're at the half of this MEAC battle. First half stats and highlights on the way when we return. 11 Pro on AT&T, America's fastest network for iPhones. More for your thing. That's our thing. You're watching ESPN's College Football presented by McDonald's. Good crowd on hand here at the half. We're just about ready to start the third quarter as South Carolina State and Florida A&M University and a tight one here. Ryan Stanley and Tyree Snick, a good quarterback battle between the two. Pretty decent thus far. Nick hasn't really been able, hasn't been able to really get going thus far. I think the Florida A&M defense has done a really good job of containing him. But the, that's good news. But the flip side is a player of his caliber, you know it's a matter of time before he starts to settle down and make some breakout plays. Ali on the kickoff. Back to return it is Vereen. Vereen tackled to the ground. So you take a look at those first half highlights. Again, we mentioned FAMU getting on the board first. It was Stanley connecting with Xavier Smith. Yeah, nice little rub route there. They had it going, and then this was a big play right here. With an opportunity to go up by two scores, Stanley gets disrupted, throws an interception to B.J. Davis. He takes it to the house to tie the game. And then the special teams from South Carolina State come up with the pump block and scoop and score for the touchdown to give them a lead. If we're honest, Jay, it's been South Carolina's state's offense that's been pretty anemic thus far. 65 total yards. Nick, we're just 
26 yards on the ground as well. Tried to go for that one all the way. The home run Ooh. ball on the first play. No penalty marker as Shaq Davis was the intended target. And that's what, what I don't get necessarily. So they're not going to say there was a hold. And I know with his size and ability, I don't see how you call that ball not catchable because he made a fantastic catch earlier climbing the ladder. I like this. Give him a chance to make a play. That was a push. Not quite as magnified as it seemed to be the first time we saw it. I could live with the no call. And Troy Hilton, who is the guy that you know we thought teams might be focusing in on because they may be picking at him a little bit in that secondary position. But the run up the middle, nothing going here. Now it's third down quickly. Yeah, and I don't like that call. I like the call to come out and throw it. But I want to see Tyrese Nick throw the ball three times in a row. Try and get the ball to your wide receivers to get him going. See the 28 yards rushing, 37, I mean 65 yards total offense. They haven't been able to pick up first downs. One of five on third downs. That'll lead to you getting beat bad in the time of possession. They got a full 10 to pick up here. You talked about in the open how... Nick was a much improved passer this year. He was definitely a threat on the ground here. An obvious passing situation. Once more going for it again. Double coverage. Will Vereen was the intended target, but two white jerseys around him. And once again, number five, Marquise Bell. We've seen him come up and lay the hammer. And then we see him play the true free safety position, giving some help to the cornerback, Troy Hilton. And it looked as if Vereen had a step on him. Coming out of the locker room, three plays and a punt for South Carolina State as the offensive woes continue. I think, Jay, that's always the interesting conversation that we have. And week in and week out, we see these teams. What adjustments will they make coming out of the locker room? And there, nothing going for South Carolina State. Meanwhile, Azende Ray on the return, a pickup of a few. So what did you see or did you like about Florida and ms offense in that first half? I like how they gave up trying to run the football. They realized that Ryan Stanley's going to have to be the guy, and they put the ball in his hands. They just didn't capitalize on a couple of drives. They didn't finish the drives, but Willie Simmons is playing respect to the defensive line for South Carolina State, and when the big run stuff for Robert Crouch got hurt, then he decided to run the football. You see... Ranking first in the MEAC in passing yards per game. They're inching their way up again as they have 159 yards through the air. Bishop Bonnet in the backfield. Stanley quickly out to David Manigo. Manigo with a quick one and continuing to stay on his feet. And because of that extra effort, he's near the first down marker. And I think it's good enough to move the chains. And, and I know that Florida a and is on offense, but this is what I want to see South Carolina State do. Just take the ball, throw a five-yard hitch route to your wide receivers where your best playmakers are, the athletes, and let them create something to help your quarterback get going. And sometimes that's the difference when you've got a former quarterback as your head coach, offensive coordinator. He knows what it takes to keep his quarterback involved, how to distribute the ball, whereas South Carolina State is struggling to get the ball to their playmakers. Stanley with a handoff to Bishop Bonnet. Bonnet up the middle, and you see just that quick first step from Bonnet, the redshirt junior out of Jacksonville, brought down by Jalen Barr. I mean, Jalen Barr with a touchdown saving tackle coming up from his safety position there. They finally found that crease they've been looking for. They faked like they were going sweep to the outside with one cut. Bonnet cut back up and biggest run of play of the day for Florida a &M. 15 yards on that one. This last run of seven yards again. Quick tempo offense here. Man out to the right. That's Manigo once more, who has been the favorite target of Stanley on this drive. So momentum continuing to roll for the Rattlers. They are stepping on the gas pedal. Look how quickly they're getting this ball snapped. They see a personnel in South Carolina State that they like, and they're going after it. Right there, Xavier Middle, Smith across the middle, and Smith able to leap into the end zone. Boy, he launched his way in there, got hit on the way down. 
and FAMU with the score, 24 yards from Stanley to Smith, second TD of the day for the receiver. And that was the Rattlers strike, and the strike, and they struck again, nice thrown ball, and you talk about Xavier Smith being unbelievable, he knows where the goal line is, he elevates, leaves his feet to cross the score and give Florida and them an impressive drive of their first possession of the second half. A couple of TDs last weekend for Smith. Once more, he does it again. The best wide receiver on this squad. You get him the ball in open space. One man can't take him down. When he sees two at the goal line, get out of my way. I got work to do. Fourteen to nineteen for Florida A&M. That's how you draw it up in the X's and O's. Ryan Stanley to Xavier Smith to make it 21-14, and it hasn't taken very long for the Rattlers to get on the board. You look at that quick strike scoring drive coming out of the locker room. And, and the number of plays. I mean, five plays getting it done. Halftime adjustment. Great job by Willie Simmons coming out there and striking a little fire underneath this offensive unit. Taking the lead here in Orangeburg, South Carolina. And for the moment, that's taken some of the energy out of the stadium for now. But this has been a seesaw battle between the two. Vereen, who has had some nice returns, negated by penalties. Here he goes once more. Airborne ball comes loose. It's still on the ground. Fumble. And it looks like Florida A&M recovered it. They're going to have to take a look at this one. He elevated, and that ball, did it come out when he hit the ground, or was it prior to him? Did the ball start to move prior to him, making contact with the ground? Ricky Henrillis, the running back who converted the defense, also playing on special teams, is the one who runs away with it. Green elevates. Yeah, I don't think that's fumble. I mean, he elevated, and the ball, when the elbow hit the ground, the ball came out. What do you think there, Uh That's a bang-bang play, but I'm going to say that, is there enough evidence to overturn it? You think, yes, he is down. I mean, yeah, the elbows, he had control of the football. Yeah, control the on the field the was a fumble recovered by Florida a &M. The previous play is under further review. Ball out, didn't drop it. And that's their time for they say they used to have the old rule that the ground can't cause a fumble. Well, that's not true either. But in all cases, but in this case here, when he leaves his feet with a tackle, the elbow marks him down. Having the elbow down is just like having a knee yep. down. Okay, so his hand is down there. So, yep. Yep. but even yes, where the ball uh, is, even where the yeah. ball, yeah, even when he's got the ball, you'll see. One hand goes down, ball's not moving, it's secure. And yeah. then the pressure forces the ball out and pops out. But you never know. No, nope, the, they see the it a play is way. under review. The call on the field was that the fumble was recovered by Florida A&M, but based on what we see, it may not be a fumble. Glory Bernard is trying to sort that out right now. And it's also what as I'm evolving with dealing with instant replay, the views we have from a television production standpoint are not the ones that they're looking at in the officials booth for view. They've got a different set of cameras, they've got different angles. We saw that in the game on Thursday that we just covered with North Carolina Central. The, I don't see that ball moving prior to him making contact with the ground. Now, they may see a slight movement, but I don't see it moving. Nobody hit the ball. No, it was Henrillis who came underneath and just clipped him, sent Vereen airborne right there. And that's why I don't see any movement on the ball. Yeah. I... As they continue to review this, 
Jay, you also think, though, just about how, whether this call goes your way or not, you see a different team coming out of the locker room for Willie Simmons. Yeah, bringing some intensity, bringing some thump. And if you can match the physical nature of South Carolina State, you have a chance to compete and get in the victory here. But unfortunately for Coach Simmons, I think whenever they start talking about stuff this long in the replay, they're probably asking, okay, where did he make contact with the ground? Where do we place the ball? What's the time clock? So I think if they were going to call it a fumble, then it would have been more quick. Bang, bang, not enough to overturn it. But I'm pretty sure that they're looking to see where we place the ball, spot the ball, and time on the clock. Let's see if I got it right. After further review, the runner's arm was down prior to losing the ball. First and 10, South Carolina State at the 25-yard line. Got him. Hey, every now and then. Every now and then. Every now and then. Now, if you're South Carolina State, you take advantage of it. I mean, you just were facing a shotgun <laughs> down your, down at, at you. And now you have an opportunity to get second life. You get the ball back. It's time to say, Therese Nick, let's go. That's what you have to say. You may need some of the senior leaders to come up to him and challenge the junior quarterback. Nick with time and wide open on the right side. And Nick oh. takes a hit to the head. A tough hit there as Mark Eric Smith delivered a hard hit right to the head of Tyrese Nick. Flags come out very quickly. And that's a... This is... Be a this is interesting because Tyrese Nick at the end showboated a little bit and Nick popped him, but I thought it was a legal hard hit. Tyrese Nick didn't really give himself up. Uh -uh. Personal foul, targeting, oh, defense, yeah. number eight. The previous play is under further review. And what it's all going to come down to is, do you consider, tell me, do you consider Tyrese Nick a defenseless player? Is he defenseless right now? You see him slowing up, but he goes straight for the head. That's the thing about it. Like, well, I thought yes, he was about to jump over him. He's I taking those steps like he's going to jump over him. So if somebody's going to jump over you, you don't yeah. go low. You go high. But right. take a look. And I think if we look at that replay again, if any part of the crown of the helmet makes contact, then that targeting is going to stay. Okay, so the question, did he launch upward thrust, severe strike, you're saying he did. yes to that, okay? Yep. Yep. The next, it's forcible hit by the crown of the helmet. I mean, it, it went helmet to helmet there. You know what? J just by, I mean, you see him coming here and they're going to identify, he sees him, he sees him gearing up like he's going to try and jump over me. Are you serious? But then you look at it again. I want to see the definition again, and I think that that targeting is going to stay because there is a launch and a thrust. And even when he realized he wasn't jumping over me, trying to jump, I think this right here. Dangerous, yep. Absolutely. Dangerous hit, launching, thrusting, and he definitely did that. Yeah, and, and you can't do this. In, in today's college football, when it's all about player safety, you can't do it. Defenseless players, cheap shots. They're going to get you ejected. And for him, he's ejected for the rest of this game mm -hmm. and the first half of the next game. He's your starting corner in that Rattler secondary. And he's, he's the best corner they've got. He's the better of the two corners. They say teams don't pick on him because they know it's a wasted cause. They tend to pick on Troy Hilton. On the opposite side but now Troy Hilton's gonna have to step up and make some plays because I really don't think that they're gonna overturn that call Eric Smith 5'9 Richard freshman out of Miami and you could hear everyone in, in the stands feel like oh wow that was a big blow to the head.
<laughs> he really was thinking about jumping over. Yeah, he was. After further review, the ruling for targeting is confirmed. Number eight for Florida A&M is disqualified for the remainder of the contest. So Smith will head back to the locker room and like you said, Jay will miss the first half of next week at home against North Carolina A&T. So now Courtney Cox, the sophomore out of Decatur, number 12 in white to the bottom of your screen, coming in for Smith. Ooh, quickly there in the backfield was Terry Jefferson, but the ball still going forward and Marquise Bell there to tackle. Wow, you talk about a great yeah. decision by Tyrese Nick to pull the ball. He fooled me 100 percent. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I thought that Terry Richard Terry Jefferson had blown this play up in the backfield, but he did not have the football. And Nick able to pick up over five yards on first down. That was making a little something out of nothing. Great decision there, as you mentioned, by Nick. Nick once again going on the outside. Shaq Davis has a man, the position, and unable to come up with it, and the flag comes out. And there's one downfield. There also may be one at the line of scrimmage for a late hit. There's laundry on there. I think this is going to be a neutral play. And they've been waiting to get the matchup. They picked on the cornerback that came in the game, Courtney Cox. Got him matched up against Shaq Davis. They've been waiting for it to explode, and he's able to run by them. So the officials continue to talk it over, as you mentioned, two different flags on two different parts of the field. And two fouls on the play, one against each team. Pass interference. Defense, number 12. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense, number 52. Both fouls will be enforced. It'll be an automatic first down for South Carolina State. The previous spot will be the spot of the foul, will be the spot of the next snap. First down. The spot of the snap, next down, I don't know, but I mean, we saw this, he couldn't separate from the receiver, number 12, was holding on, and that's what a good defensive back is taught to do. And you don't give up the touchdown, give up the pass interference penalty. They called that one, but unfortunately for South Carolina State, Jalen Page, number 52, the right guard, unsportsmanlike conduct after the penalty had been called. You can see Coach Simmons None too pleased there, so it's first and 10 from the 38 of Florida A&M. The handoff to Morris, and Morris still able to stay on his feet, getting some extra tough yards, just a couple there. Get back to throwing the football. I mean, we see the playmakers, and we've seen Bulldog wide receivers able to get open against this Florida A&M secondary. For the speed of Florida A&M is in their linemen and linebackers, but the secondary, they've got some gaps there. Nick holding on to it, and Nick was brought down. So now third and manageable, Derek Mayweather in on the stop, and what do you call here? First of all, you just tell your quarterback, I just need some positive yards. We're, we're in two down territory again, right? Do not take a sack, protect the football at the interception. We're yet to see Nick roll out one time and maybe because it's hard to do against a very speedy defense, but look for a one-on-one -on -one matchup and take a shot. Nick tries to roll out instead. He's met by a bevy of defenders off of Florida A&M. Derek Mayweather was the first to get to him. And then Demontre Moore and Isaiah Land was able to end that one. And I don't fault the call. I fault the execution. First time they decided to roll the pocket, but they just get beat in one-on-one -on -one matchups on the offensive line, which has been the surprise to me this game. South Carolina State has a very good offensive line, 
but they have not been able to deal with the quicker defensive lineman from Florida A&M. So Benjamin on to punt, tries to angle this one. Oh, wow. Wonderful opportunity squandered there. The touchback after that 39-yard punt. Florida A&M on offense when we come back. Well, let's take a look at today's Bringing the Flavor brought to you by McDonald's. We've been showing a lot of love today to the Marching 101 under the direction of Patrick Moore. We'll see if they can help get their team back in this one as Florida A&M with a 21-14 lead. And here they come out slinging once again Stanley to Andrew Davis, the retro junior out of Mount Dora pickup of 10 that moves the chains. Now, you know I'm all about the flavor, yeah. bringing the flavor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This game been all about bringing the hits. <laughs> <laughs> it's been they a physical football game. <laughs> you know, before the game, Jay, you were bringing the hits. You, you were like one after the other. <laughs> they don't know about you, man. Uh, I got skills to come up with the song. I don't have a voice. Can't <laughs> sing, but I like music. Look at this little bunch formation at the top. And this happened, they may be trying to set you up to go opposite side of the field. Oh, double Instead, move. Instead, one-on-one coverage, and nobody is there with Azende Ray. Ray with a quick move, trying to show off a little speed as well. And Azende Ray, the man, 63 yards, and into the red zone are the Rattlers. Well, Willie Simmons set him up nicely, gave him that little funky formation. They're thinking it's to set him up for a wide receiver bubble screen, double move, and Ray gets behind and becomes a foot race. The handoff quickly to the left side. Bishop Bonnet absorbing some of that contact from DeAndre Daniels. Pickup of two. When you look at that wide receiving court, though, for Florida A&M, all BX selections, second and third team. They've got a lot of weapons on the outside. Ray is one of those converted running backs from high school out in that wide receiver position. And you get him in space, watch out. And look at the contrast of passing yards. 279 for Florida A&M, just 37 for South Carolina State misdirection and you see there Terrell Jennings once more finding the end zone when Terrell Jennings enters the ball game for the Rattlers he's a downhill runner one cut bigger back they have he's willing to challenge in between the tackles and comes away with the touchdown run and this is one here he's gonna run downhill Somebody's in the hole. He's the big back that can lower the shoulder. Six feet, 225 pound freshman from Jakeville, Florida. And Florida A&M is taking control of this football game. Back-to-back -back scoring drives of five plays in under two minutes. And the Rattlers on the road trying to create some separation. <laughs> Back here in Orangeburg, and the fans travel from Tallahassee, and the Rattlers on top, 28-14. You go back and look at that touchdown catch from Azende Ray. How did he get open, Jay? Yeah, it was a big one. You're going to see Ray line up here. Watch him stop block and then keep going. And the freshman, D.J. Davis, gets caught looking in the backfield. Number 15, he peeks. Ray runs by him for that huge play to put the Rattlers in scoring position. And so now a little breathing room for the Rattlers here in Oliver C. Dawson Stadium. You see first half, the second half, pair of touchdowns 
in that first half so far here in this third quarter as well and those numbers continuing to rise on offense Montrez Burroughs feels this one inside the 25 fair I mean excuse me inside the 10 fair catch ball will come out to the 25 So Willie Simmons all smiles right now up 28 14 on his birthday as oh, wait a Florida minute, wait a minute. Who, Oh boy, oh wait a minute. That right I get a little there. love wait a nowadays. Minute, wait a minute. Hey now. What? See, I was just gonna talk about the fact that it has terrific programs and uh, journalism. Now I wanna say this, journalism, the School of Journalism and Media and Graphic Communication, J School for Pam Oliver, Roy Wood Jr. And myself. All right, just well, let me just to you. Give me another famous alum that's not on that list. Common. Okay. Will Packer. <laughs> okay. Stop. All right. Keisha it. Lance Bottoms, <laughs> mayor of Atlanta. You want me to keep going? Nick gets it out to his receiver. And again, another hard hit on the outside from Terry Jefferson. But the pickup from Omar Cummings is near the first down. A solid game on first down and coming out throwing, Jay. And that's what you're going to have to do right now. Because of the speed and quickness and this little 3-4 defensive alignment is really giving them confusion in their running game. They're shooting the gaps. Nick with a lot of space up ahead. Good yeah. blocking up front. And that old line creating a hole. Well, that's the play they ran last week versus Delaware State where Nick took it 57 yards. That quarterback draw. But that was a really good open field tackle again by Marquise Bell. I mean, tackling Tyrese Nick is not easy, but he's making it look simple. Option flip there, out. There go Bell. There go that man <laughs> again. <laughs> there go that man. I like that. I mean, they will get somebody hurt. That's the, that's the third time they ran that option. First time it worked. Last two times he's blown up the pitch man. And that's assignment football. That's how you play the option. He's responsible for the runner, and he's putting some wood on it. You mentioned high school Under Armour All-American. Signed with Maryland and became a top 20 Juco player before landing at Florida AM. Nick just runs behind Cummings and tackled out of bounds near the first down marker, but Nick decided to try to take matters into his own hands a little bit more. You're going to have to. That's what playing the quarterback position is all about. When you're having trouble with reading the secondary and the coverages that they're giving you, simplify your offense, rely more on your pre-snap read. If it's not there, you need to get rid of it or take off running. But he's definitely having trouble trying to pick apart this defense. Third and short, but Nick able to have some success on third down. It's the second time they've been able to pick up a third down. But across midfield now at just about the 46-yard line. And I'm really impressed with this speed. They play fast. Like, you think you see a big hole, it's going to be a seven or eight yard game, and it's only two yards. Right now, South Carolina State is fighting for every yard they can get. Got him. Has him on their heels. Shaq Davis wide open and then falls down as he had nothing but grass in front of him. Love the play call. They set him up. You know the moment you fake option pitch, then Marquise Bell is going to leave the middle of the field. That leaves you one-on-one -on -one with that matchup you've been trying to get to all day. And Shaq Davis can keep his footing. That's a touchdown. Ah, he's going to regret not getting in the end zone there. Davis out of Somerville. Let's see? Number 50. Five-yard penalty. First down. And that's why it's important to finish off that play to score. Because now you're looking at first and goal from the 15-yard line. That was Michael Terry, the senior out of Duluth, Georgia. But you see that South Carolina State is trying to pick on that matchup on the outside. The six-foot Courtney Cox coming in for Eric Smith, who got disqualified. The pitch out once more, and a big hit on Omar Cummings. Mm. They're throwing leather. Yeah. As Cortez Reed. They are throwing the wood down there. Mm -hmm. Big Alex Taylor, number 73. You, you would assume that we would see 
him more in the game plan, that right tackle, again, pro prospect. Whistle before the snap. Ball start. Offense. Number 12. Five yard penalty. Second down. Mm. Moving backwards after the big play. Yeah, continuing to shoot yourself in the foot when you have the momentum. You're trying to pick up something here. That big catch by Shaq Davis and then here called for the false start. Now this is when as a quarterback you show leadership. You tell your offensive line, hey, that's okay. That just gives us more room to operate. You know, when you're, tight, when you're down there in the eight-yard line, routes are limited. Move back a little bit. Be cocky. Say, I've got more room to throw some passes now. And this is where Tyrese Nick has become more dangerous. Nobody there. Mm. And Nick lucky to get away with that one. Now third and goal coming up. Yeah, he, he's struggling. I just don't think he's seeing the coverages. He doesn't understand how Florida a and is attacking him. Because there's a couple times in this game we've seen him just throw the ball up for grabs. I mean, that's just a miss. South Carolina State still in striking distance. Four wide receivers set. Nick with time. Nick delivers, and the ball jarred loose after that hit. Big number nine, Andrew Hines coming through, the senior out of Hallandale. And that's what we've talked about. It's the speed. When you've got a fast defense, they get there a step sooner than you're used to. You think you've got a receiver wide open, and as soon as he catches the ball, textbook job by Andrew Hines. Plays that. So the 33-yard field goal attempt, Dylan Bredesen is on. And it's through the uprights. So South Carolina State doesn't come up empty. They walk away with three points, now trailing by 11. Well, looking around the MEAC, we saw Central and Cookman in action earlier this week. The Wildcats walked away with the win. How about Norfolk State spoiling Howard's homecoming with a big win on the road, 49-21. No comment. Of course you would have no comment. And then Morgan State down in Delaware State, 34-3. Congratulations, Morgan State head coach Tyrone Wheatley picking up his first victory as a head coach. First year coach for Morgan State. Now, Jay, you always have so much to say. I'm so shocked that you were speechless here as you see that score from how? No comment. <laughs> oh, now you're we, putting on your politician we, hat. <laughs> I mean, we definitely won homecoming. But we just didn't win the homecoming game, seems like. Kanye West was on the yard of Howard. Azende Ray is on the sideline. He's still running down across midfield, but a penalty marker, and that one will likely come back. That's a shame that Howard, we're now going back to days where all we can say is our homecoming is better than yours. <laughs> They've had those times before now. <laughs> we don't lose homecoming. Normally we don't lose a homecoming game. But, ooh, what is going on in Washington, D.C.? During the return, personal foul. Blindside block on the return team. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, we've seen a, a lot of penalty markers thrown on kickoff and punt returns, but kickoffs especially. And that blindside block call, that's another one of those things for public safety where they're trying, oh, that was it right there. Defenseless guy. What they're trying to say in college football now is when you have an opportunity just to get in the way and shield them out, like to box them out, do that. But when you take that shot, you're going to see it coming up. You see it, it's coming right there. I didn't get a chance to show it to you but there's nothing they call that a defenseless tackler and there's no place for that in today's college football world and they're doing the right thing for safety reasons stanley with the handoff to bishop bonnet and bonnet picks up a couple meanwhile ryan stanley who came in second on the list in all-time career passing yards 
has now become the all-time leader. He only needed 27 to make that move up the charts. And he's got a, another good game brewing, 281 yards in the air. With time, and Stanley, who can hurt you from time to time with his feet, takes off and runs out of the bound, but picks up the first down on the way. Did you see the end of that run? He kind of told the guy, like, hold on, man, hold on. <laughs> like, don't hit me. I'm, I'm going out of bounds. I'm, I don't know if I've ever seen that. Take a look. It's a good job of escaping, right? They, he got the protection. Nobody's open. He steps up, and then he weaves to the outside. And this is a senior quarterback. He's going there. Like, hey, easy, easy, man. Easy. I'm going out of bounds. <laughs> I'm going out of bounds. They affectionately call him Sunshine around the campus. Bonnet is quickly bottled up. Why do they call him Sunshine? Is he a race Sunshine? Yes, he could, he could be considered that. Have you ever seen Remember the Titans? Yes. Remember? Uh, it was an all-black team, and then the kid came in from California, and he was a white quarterback. So in this instance, at an HBCU, Stanley is the signal caller. And he really embraces it, too. Stanley going to the outside. Mm, that's good. And what a catch by David Manigo. Manigo has come up with some really good receptions here today. And he and Stanley practice that. That's the second time it's been that back shoulder, go up and get it type of throw. And the timing and rhythm in which they're seeing eye to eye on that one. How do you defend it? I mean, that was great defense. You're right there with him. It's just a better throw and catch where that's the only place that the ball can be caught. And they practiced that before. Closing in on 300 yards. And Stanley receive it. Looks downfield. Gets it away. And incomplete. When you look at Ryan Stanley, a guy who has a lot of tools, but he has really grown in his position. What have you seen from the first time he stepped on Fanny's campus to the quarterback he is now? One, his arm's gotten strong. Before, he, he's always been an accurate thrower, but the ball's just a float, little bit hang. He, he's got a little bit more zip on the ball. Not an overpowering arm, but a strong arm. And the confidence. I mean, he, he plays with a certain swagger now. Maybe that's rubbed off on him being there at FAMU, but it's a certain type of swag he's got now. That's a term they like to use where he goes out there and expects to attack. And Xavier Smith finally brought down. They also like to say, you know, but, but when you watch this FAMU team, you know, you talk about the disappointing ending to their season last year. What they like to say now, they got a little sauce to them this year. They're playing with a little chip on the shoulder and some unfinished business. I mean, they were they were the kings of college football for a couple weeks last year when they controlled their own destiny. All they had to do was win one of their last two games to make it to the national championship game. They fell short. Stanley calls his own number, able to get it out. And Tipped away, dangerous pass, but great defense there by Jalen Barr to anticipate it. The Citadel transfer is mighty quick, and he was right there to bat it away. I'm out on the field for an injured player. So John L. Brown, Will Linebacker, is down on the field. And you talk about, Jay, just in continuing that conversation with Florida A&M, you know, they're unable to participate in any postseason activity, self-imposed one-year ban in the NCAA. And so they're still out to prove. There, there is still a lot to play for in terms of pride. And this is a group that came back really re-energized. Yeah. Now, now, hold on, Rattlers. That's what I say. Hold on, Rattlers, right? The team's looking real good on TV right now. You're doing well. But I can promise you there's one team that don't care how y'all look. And who would that team be, do you think, Miss Green? 
you know, what I have to I just say ask to you, that, as an analyst, what team do you think could care less about Florida and Well, you put my analyst hat on. I mean, well, it door. comes down to the end of the season, right? It comes down to the end of the season. Your in-state rival in the Wildcats has a great punt there and a tough decision there from Demontres Burroughs and yeah, he finding himself deep into his own territory. Could have fair caught that one, but Chris Fadul again, such a vital weapon on that's this That's the end of the third deep. quarter. And that's where Media we'll see out. South Carolina State start on the, on the return. For the most wins here at South Carolina State with 128 on his career, but his group is trailing in the fourth quarter. Their offense has yet to really get going or score as we've seen a defensive pick six along with a pump block for a return touchdown. Credit to Florida A&M on defense. And this South Carolina State offense was playing at a very high level coming off an impressive output versus Delaware State a week ago where they put 38 points on the board but has not been the case today as they've struggled to find a rhythm and this is a series as of late that's been owned by South Carolina State they've won the last 14 we talked about that shellacking back in Tallahassee 44 to 21 last year but still a lot of football remaining can they get it going? What an adjustment there by Demontres Burroughs. Burroughs coming down with the catch. He had two touchdowns and nearly 100 yards last week, and they've got to get him going. Yeah, making up for making that poor decision on the punt return before, but you'll see him go there with two white jerseys, but watch him readjust against the underthrown ball. Good play for the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Nick with plenty of time, and that one was deflected and falls right into the hands of Derek Mayweather. Mayweather coming up with it. Another great defensive play by the Rattlers. You know, South Carolina State, what's sad about this, South Carolina State went to max protection. That was a three-man route. That means they're keeping seven people in the block, and they still were able to get to the quarterback. Look at all those red jerseys here with the wall. But yet, they still allow somebody to win their assignment one-on-one. -on -one. Have the block by Elijah Richardson from his linebacker position. Hits the arm. Ball goes up in the air. And as you mentioned, Derek Mayweather comes away with the interception. So not the afternoon Tyrese was hoping for. Stanley trying to go for it. Still able to shake loose was That's Marcus Williams as he was tied up with his oh, wow. defender on the outside. No penalty marker on the yeah. field, and it's just an that, incompletion. That was almost a tackle on the outside. The Kobe Durant was losing his footing, and as he was going to the ground, he started pulling on the receiver. So Marcus Williams tried to ask for the flag. Nothing coming out. Durant, who stumbled on that one, appeared to have injured himself. He goes to the sideline. But you have to like the aggressive play calling by Willie Simmons to continue to go for it, even though they have the lead. Well, you know, that's what you normally do after a turnover. A lot of aggressive play callers go for it. Like, let's go for the home run ball. It wasn't our ball to begin with. Try to reward the defense. Woo! Just nowhere to go. Converging on that one really quickly was Dominguez Wilson, a loss of four. And you're just asking your defense, one more stop to try and get the ball back to the offense. If they can come away with a three and out right now, that should possibly spark this offense. But right now, offensively, it's make or break time for the Bulldogs if they're able to get the football back. I'd watch out for number 19, Xavier Smith. The 
Third and long, Stanley surveying the field. Manigo bobbles it, Helen hangs on to it. And that's good enough to pick up the first down. He read the covers off his pre-snap read. They tried to roll the safeties. That gave one-on-one -on -one with some cushion to Manigo on the outside. He knows where he's going with the ball right away. Look the safety to the left. You know Manigo's running the crossing route. Second level throw, look right off the break. Ball's gone. That is timing. Willie Simmons says he's an accurate passer and he can make all the throws all the time. Right yeah, and he's just shredding up that secondary for the Bulldogs. I mean, Ryan Stanley, he's seeing the coverage. That's the difference. You see, Tyrese Nick, he's not seeing the ball, the coverage, the rhythm. He knows what coverage he's getting. That ball is coming out in rhythm right now for North Carolina. Sorry, for Florida a &M. Manigo, once again, after that 15-yard pickup, gets another about six yards there. The Manigo's really stepped up his game a little bit. He was, they say he was a little bit flashy as a freshman, and then was humble when he got to play the Florida Classic last year versus Bethune-Cookman. Yeah, he was thrown into the fire there for sure. No huddle offense once more for Florida a and wow. A dangerous throw in Y and double coverage, and Stanley just trying to force it in there. The INT, the second pick of the game for the Bulldogs defense. This time, it's Jalen Barr. Huge mistake. Huge mistake. You're in field goal range. You're getting ready to put a team down by more than two scores. You cannot afford to be careless with the football in the end zone. A team that was getting ready to lose hope if you score, now they're still just down by 11. They think they've got hope here. You cannot make that play if you're Ryan Stanley. And now Buddy Pugh still has a chance. He know he got lucky on that one. He know he got away with one. And Nick goes outside and finds DeBose, Traquan DeBose, first time he's been targeted today. 24-yard completion. Now they want to go back this interception. This is a little deep route, so they're trying to set you up there. That's a deep route to get you to come up. When it's not there, you're trying to sneak somebody behind him, but he forced it instead of maybe just going back to the little deep route they called at the top. And now, Nick, you see Starting to feel it picking up a little bit. Couple of completions here. Good for eight. That'll bring up second and short. And I want to see them. We haven't seen them do a bubble screen yet. I mean, they're giving you some room. If you can do a little bubble screen, a little rub play, these wide receivers for South Carolina State, if you get them the ball, they can make the first tackle miss. Corey Fields in at quarterback, replacing. Nick and right there on the money to Will Vereen. Vereen went up and got it. And the change at quarterback, also a change of pace for this offense. They're picking on Cody Cox, number 12. Backup cornerback, he comes in the game. And when they get that one-on-one -on -one matchup, they're telling him green light, go for it. And the Vereen just flew by him. And it's not going to get easier for Cox. They're trying to switch the side of the field. Now he's matched up one-on-one -on -one versus Shaq Davis at the top of your screen. Fields. Once again, called upon. This time, he targets Demontres Burroughs, and Burroughs comes down with it. Outstanding hands by Demontres Burroughs, and the 12-yard reception, just like that, brings them all the more closer to the Rattlers. How did I describe that interception by Ryan Stanley? Huge. <laughs> what do they do? They come back and make you pay. Threads the needle in a very tight window, but look at the concentration to hold on to the football. That ball doesn't even touch the ground. That's a big time catch by DeMontrez Burroughs. Bulldogs capitalizing off the turnover, putting points on the board. They're down by four. DeMontrez Burroughs coming up big, but how about Corey Dana coming in cold, delivering the bullet. A turn of the tide here in this wonderful MEAC matchup here from Orangeburg, South Carolina. The Bulldogs trailing by four. 
we talked about it in the break, Jay. The turn of events here, FAMU has an opportunity to go up big on the road instead, throwing the interception, creating the opportunity for Corey Fields, the backup quarterback who comes in cold and goes four for four, 80 yards, and a TD. I mean, you know, he's the hot hand. He went with it, and you have an opportunity to go up 17 points in the fourth quarter on the road in a conference game. You have to do that. Can't afford to give them hope. Now, all of a sudden, South Carolina State, you know the defense is going to come fired up. We've got to see if Ryan Stanley can help come back. This one, a good return, likely going to come back as we see several penalty markers on the field. And Zende Ray, who has been electric, he's got plenty of speed, but we saw that flag travel how many yards in the air? <laughs> About 30 yards. It was running like step for step with him for a while. He kind of knew it too. During the return, holding. Return team, number 40. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Well, what was a 61 yard kickoff return is coming back. Just over 10 minutes to go. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green here with you as both of these teams undefeated in conference play. One will remain that way at the end of this one. Ryan Stanley, we'll see how he bounces back after that mistake. He's thrown two picks here today. And to Stanley's defense, I will say this, when he threw the pick six earlier in the game, he came back next drive and put some points on the board to redeem himself. Can he find redemption once again here against South Carolina State? You think about just how important this game is for both teams, for Florida A&M. They want to pick up this road win because next week, They've got North Carolina a and coming to their digs. Stanley rolls to his right, delivers it to Manigo. Manigo still on the ground. A tough guy to bring down. He gets a lot of yards after catch. That first arm tackle is not going to get him. He keeps going. 11 yards on that game. Yeah, big wide receiver, 6'3", 185 pounds, solid. As we talked about before, his upside is tremendous. Work ethic improved during the offseason. Out of Decatur, where it's greater, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Tight end in motion. Stanley, the handoff. And again, that running game just yeah. has not been there today. We've seen it in spurts, but just not able to get that consistently, that ground game. Yeah, and they want to run the ball, but they really don't because they realize you're not going to pick up positive yardage, but you have to run the ball when you're up by four with eight minutes. So you can't, that's why you just can't abandon the running game because every time you throw an incomplete pass, the clock stops. And that would give South Carolina State more time to try to mount a comeback. Stanley finds Smith. Smith turned around. Woo! Smith finding a little crease. Xavier Smith just tripped up near the 40 yard line. Dwayne Nichols was able to just get a piece of him as Smith was about to say, how at you, boy. An absence of a running game, extended handoff to the wide receiver on the outside where they've got a little bit more room to make people miss. Jennings, who already has a couple Nothing. of touchdowns on the day, but moves ahead for just about a yard. Yeah, but that clock is ticking. See that clock ticking right there? That's what you want. This last play by Smith, he's special. Get him the ball behind the line of scrimmage, and he says, I'll show you how to run the rock. Get the offensive lineman out there and the speed, and Dwayne Nichols with the touchdown saving tackle. I mean, that's a huge tackle there by Dwayne Nichols. Did you give your team an opportunity still to try and limit them to just a field goal attempt? And right now, fam, you're not quite in field goal range yet. On the handoff. Bonnet. Bonnet not been able to really break through that second level of a defense, not only today, but throughout this season. 
And, and what's impressive about South Carolina State's defense, they're not selling out making run blitzes. You know, they're not packing the box with eight people in the box because you can't because of the talent that Florida a and has a wide receiver and at the quarterback position. It's just their front four owning the line of scrimmage, and they need their defensive secondary to come up with a stop now. Five for 12, bringing the pressure. Azende Ray, great adjustment, bringing the ball in, hauling in that catch, and picking up the first down. There have been some key moments here in this game after South Carolina State looks like they have them on their heels that they're able to convert. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, Ryan Stanley just hooks up and finds a one on one matchup, throwing something you really don't see much in today's college football the out route. 10, 12 yard out routes. Just over six minutes to go. Deeper into Bulldog territory. Bishop Bonnet, a little bit more successful there on that first down run. Sets up second and seven. And I'm starting to see the defensive line from South Carolina State get a little tired. It's the fourth quarter. This is when that conditioning kicks in. See those hands on that waist there, that hip, they're breathing hard, heavy. They may be able to maybe catch one of them taking a snooze on the play and hit him for a big run. Bonnet trying to go for it up the middle, and he stopped. Well, I'll tell you this, we've seen a combination of Xavier Johnson, Bruce Johnson, Tyrell Goodwin, Roderick Perry, Dominguez Wilson, all those guys up front for South Carolina State. Can they get some more push as time continuing to wind off the clock? And I think South Carolina State has to sell out right now. They've been trying to play zone coverage and have the front four get there. It's time to bring pressure on Ryan Stanley. You have to try and hit him. Anytime you sit back in the zone, he finds a way to pick you apart. There, what deception as Bishop Bonnet finally gets through and into the end zone. Bonnet, who's been quiet all season long, finds the end zone for the first time this season. 18-yard touchdown run. Finished it off there. What a call here. They go with the draw and shakes Cornelius Walker, number 46, in the middle of the field and finds the end zone for a cap off to an impressive drive by Florida A&M. 10 plays, 75 yards, just over five minutes, an all important one, and what an answer from the Rattlers. Media timeout. They're back against the wall. They hadn't been able to run the football all day. The moment Bonnie saw daylight, he capitalized. Rattlers up 35-24. Rattlers on the road traveling and cheering on Florida A&M as they're on top 35-24, just under five minutes away from a big road victory for Willie Simmons' crew as they've gotten off to their best start since 2009 we talked about the Willinium, the second edition of it and this year they're more and more excited down in Tallahassee and they are four minutes and 53 seconds away from ending a 15-year drought against South Carolina State I could not imagine Van you not beating South Carolina State in 15 is it 15 years yeah. this would be the 15th. Well, Jay, it's time for power rankings in just a little bit. I, I, I got to know that. You want to know when, what's when, 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 No. When you're looking at it now, because it's going to be really interesting, State, what do you think? South Carolina State's five. Uh, obviously, that's in jeopardy right now. Number four, we're going to go to Southern University. Fam, you beat Southern, so they could be some leapfrogging here. This is an impressive victory. Bethune, Cookman, number three, they're winning just as well. Number two is all corn. They're running away with it. Number one is boring, because that's North Carolina A&T. They're making it look easy. But on the bubble, I had fam you. How high will they jump? I don't know. Let me know what you think. Hit us up at Black College Live, and I'll tell you. But remember, it's Jay's power ranking. Yeah. Yes, Jay. We all know well. Traquan DeBose with the reception. But, Jay, I'll go if back and say this. On. Look, if they hold on to win here, yeah. and then a very important game tonight, 
Prairie View A&M traveling to Baton Rouge to take on the Southern Jaguars. I may, if Prairie View can pull off that victory there, they may move into that top five. I think their one loss has been to Alcorn State, and Alcorn can play with anybody. And look, that was a close game. We were there for that, a 45-41 decision in favor of the Braves, but Panthers were right there. Are, are you noticing this kid Fields is in here yes. throwing strikes? Yes, he is. Remember, he played and was a starting quarterback last year, something for Buddy Pugh. Six for six now is Corey Fields. I mean, Another reception, this time again to Traquan DeBose, who was upended but lands on his feet. And this is what they should have been doing. We said the strength for them with this wide receiver core, they have the ability to get open. They've got some playmakers. And Fields is making quick decisions and throwing darts. He's the better thrower of the two between he and Nick. And this time finds another target. This time it's Wolverine. And so you see the tempo, the pace continuing to pick up first downs, getting chunks of yards. That one good for 14. Yeah, I know FAMU's trying to play a little conservative defense, but they're getting down the field in a hurry. Got him over the top, and that was an easy pitch and catch right in the bread basket for Shaq Davis. Who is this kid? <laughs> Corey Fields. 21-yard reception, Buddy Pugh, you see the two, says, let's go for it. Let's bring this one perhaps within a field goal. Um, this is the right read, the place to go with the ball, and the nice location in between the cornerback and the safety. Looks like a completely different offense when you've got field in there. Five for five on that drive in a minute and 11 seconds. Bulldogs going for two. And Fields just tosses it over. And you can return this one as Andrew Hines is able to nab it out of the air. So South Carolina State answering right back. Corey Fields looking sharp. Let's send it in to Davis. This one could come down to the wire, 35-30. Florida a and narrowly holding tight to that lead as Corey Fields has really carved up the defense since he's been inserted into the game. Oh, he's done a good job. He's been on fire. He came in throwing darts, and the interception, that was on a two-point conversion. That one incompletion was an interception. We're not going to count that, but he scored so quickly he took him down the field. I don't believe you have to go for onside kick here. You've got three timeouts. I think you kick it deep. And that way, if you do get the ball back, you have decent field position. The high bounce handled by Marcus Williams. Williams just falls to the ground near the 25. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> this is setting up to be real good, folks. And it's really going to come down to third down. Because first and second down, they're going to run the ball, right? And they haven't been able to run the ball, but you have to do it to eat up some of that clock. And the key for Florida A&M, they've been successful because on third down, Ryan Stanley's found the open receiver and able to keep the drive going. He's going to need about two legit completions to seal this game, but they're not going to come easily. 
Yeah, you think about that gutsy third down call on their last scoring drive with Bishop Bonnet up the draw. Florida and them seven for 14 on third downs at a 50% clip. You can win a lot of football games doing that. Man in motion. See, that's the token Bonnet run. Bonnet running. You're trying to make them use a timeout. I wonder how eager they are. Quick stop there. Meh, nah, they're not going to call the timeout now. I don't, I don't blame them for that. Whistle's blown as injured player. Injured timeout for an injured player. Carrier. That appears to be Bishop Bonnet, the ball carrier. Very, very interesting here. Yeah. In Orangeburg. Now you got your number one rusher. And you want to think about ball security. Let's see what happens here. And gets twisted up sideways. You know he's in a lot of pain. He let that football go and his mouthpiece. And Bonnet out of Jacksonville has been one of the guys to help carry the load, given the fact, like we mentioned earlier, they've already lost Eddie Tillman for the season. Out with a hip injury. Ricky Henrillis had to move over to defense, and he's been the main guy. Terrell Jennings, we've seen a little bit of him along with Devon Kendrick, but we hope that, that young man is okay as he's still on the ground being tended to now being at least sitting up. And it was his touchdown score that we thought sealed the deal for Florida A&M. The last possession, South Carolina State responded with a quick strike score of their own. Hope he's okay, but the young man appears to be in a lot of pain. And not putting a lot of pressure on that right leg. Being carried off to the, the field. See Bonnet's number, numbers on the day. So the whistle blows, clock continues to wind. The quick handoff, and this time it's Kendrick. And it comes down to this. It's pretty interesting. And again, Buddy Pugh still has all three of his timeouts. And I would take my time calling the play because yeah. of that. Yeah. I'm not snapping the ball to a 240. They have not used much clock on this drop as they could have. The South Carolina State finally rolled the dice and tried to blitz Ryan Stanley. Or do they sit back and let him try to pick him apart? Under 10 to go on the play clock. Stanley with pressure in his face, rolling out, nowhere to go, Whoa. nowhere there. There's no foul for yeah, intentional grounding. The, the quarterback defense. was outside the pocket, and the ball made the line of scrimmage. The front four, four got after him. Things got interesting here. Very quickly, you got a red-hot backup quarterback that came in and gave the Bulldogs a spark. And the defense able to rise to the occasion for one of the few stops in the second half. Sets up what could be a very interesting 227. And look. We've already seen a block punt here today for a score for South Carolina State. Fadul receives it and markers go down. False start. Offense, number 40. Five yard penalty, four count. That backs up Florida AM five yards. Montrez Burroughs back to receive it for South Carolina State. And snap, and another block punt. Once more, coming over, South Carolina State capitalizing. Whoa. 
huge play, and everybody erupts inside Oliver C. Dawson Stadium. Penalty marker coming out at the end, a couple on the field. But wow, second time today, Jay. The special teams have stepped up for South Carolina State in a big way. There'll be a flag for a probably excessive celebration, but I think those points are going to stand. Want to take another look at that one once we get the call because, wow. We saw it back in the first half with a plump block return for a touchdown. And here late, South Carolina State does it again. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct against South Carolina State for coming onto the field. That foul is on the entire team. Number 52 is disqualified for the remainder of the contest due to an unsportsmanlike foul received earlier in the game. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kick. We will play the try. Well, a lot going on there, but at the end of it all, you go back Here, here's what I to saw. that pump block. I actually think they called off the pump block. They said, we're going to set up a return, so everybody here is going to block their man. But watch the individual effort that comes through when one guy doesn't get the signal, and he Time goes out. for it. South Carolina State. Block, and they set up return. First charge timeout of the half. And what 30 a seconds. Play by the South Carolina State special teams, Terrence McCray. Terrence McCray, two block punts on the afternoon, recovered in the end zone by DeAndre Daniels. But give credit to McCray, number 33. See, because I saw on the field, I saw a coach run down there, a special team coach run down there and say, off, 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 and they were telling everybody off, off, off. Unfortunately, that message didn't get to Terrence McCray for Florida a and because he came through with the block. McCray, who came in from Winston-Salem Salem State, transferred in, and McCray with a huge block. And now, this is important as well. They can get this two-point conversion it'll give him a three-point lead protect him for against the field goal and fields going to Shaq Davis Davis winning that 50 50 ball just pushing off six foot five Shaq Davis coming up with a big two-point conversion and how about the decisions by fields mm -hmm. that's the right place to go with the football one-on-one -on -one matchup, throw it up high enough where he can get it. Pretty good coverage by Marquise Bell, who's 6'3 himself, but Shaq Davis went up and climbed the ladder and came away with a two-point conversion, and the Bulldogs are winning by three points. How how big I was, gonna say, go <laughs> was that interception yep. in the end zone? And look, at this is what's at stake. Right. <laughs> what's at stake besides conference standings and supremacy. Buddy P wants to win that thing today. He wants to break that record today. And really, that interception maybe maybe have been the, the biggest shift for South Carolina State in their, in their mindset and wanting to, you know they came into this game wanting to win it for Buddy P. You know that. But then they gave themselves that hope. Yep. The defense came up with the interception and the quarterback chain bringing Corey Fields in here he came in throwing darts and the offense has been like unstoppable
Mm. This one lands out of bounds, so it was already a penalty assessed on the kickoff. It went out near the 35 yard line or so. So we'll see whether we spot it. But more importantly, Jay, it's 218 to go. Illegal kick out of bounds. Kicking team. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 50 yard line. First down. Florida a &M. Yeah. Now that's huge, Jay, because you have 218 remaining, and despite those two picks, Ryan Stanley has been throwing the ball relatively well all game long, and you start with only half the field to work with. Yeah, you know, 25 yards, and they're going for a game-winning field goal. That's just two first downs, so we said it before. Whenever there's a miscue by the offense, Stanley's found a way to redeem himself. Now he finds himself trailing by three points on the road versus South Carolina State defense and a crowd that's now into the ball game. Florida a and has all three timeouts to work with. There appears to be a little confusion on the field as Willie Simmons trying to get the call in. And knowing Willie Simmons, he's not thinking about field goal. No. He's coming here on the road. He wants this win. He's thinking about plays that are going to get his team in the end zone. An aggressive play caller to hand off to Kendrick. And Kendrick up ahead, still on his feet, breaking tackles. And Devon Kendrick with an impressive first down run to move the sticks. Wow, and that was a miss by Terrell Goodwin, number 97. Had him at the line of scrimmage. It was a good job of escaping by Kendricks to keep the run going and pick up the first down. First year quarterback out of Miami. The handoff, once again, they go back with Kendrick. Try to keep it in the middle of the field. What do you think about this play call? Uh, well, it worked the first time. The yeah. second time, I don't necessarily understand it. I think, you know, you got to throw and get into that position. Do you have that much confidence that Stanley's going to be able to get you 15 yards when needed, that you won't give South Carolina State back the ball with any time? So when you make that type of play call, you're thinking you're going to kick the field goal to tie it and send it to overtime, but you're not going to allow South Carolina State to get the ball back. Stanley with time surveying the field. And oh, in and out of the hands of Smith and it hung up there just a little bit. Jalen Barr also got a touch and Barr goes down. And this ball thrown behind and hung in the air a little bit. And there were some jerseys there. Did I see a penalty flag come in late as well as there's a player that's injured? So that's Barr who's down. There's no foul on the play for sideline interference. Third down. Timeout for an injured player. So with this, we saw Bishop Bonnet go down when South Carolina State was driving. Jalen Barr down here. And an all-important third and eight coming up. What do you draw up? Because they have had success on third down. Yeah, it's predicated. The way they run their offense, they really take a look to see what the defense aligns in. And if they've got the right play call, then they will run it. What we've seen all the time is whenever they come out with a zone-type scheme that Coach Simmons can call from the sideline, he attacks the scene. You don't see him throwing deep outside. They're attacking the scene and the curls and taking the underneath stuff. When they do bring pressure, they like the little wheel route with the slot receiver faking going outside, then going up. Well, look number for number 85, David Manigo, who has been one of the big targets for Ryan Stanley along with number 19, Xavier Smith. Stanley with time, wide open, finds his man, Kendrick, and Kendrick keeps going just near the 20-yard line. So again, another third down conversion to keep going. And it was a, a two-yard pass that ended up picking first down yardage and then some. Under pressure, Ryan Stanley just moved around in the pocket and found the open receiver. 
That one good for 15. Rattlers in the red zone. See something he likes, goes for it! Just near the goal line and it's good for a touchdown! The big tight end, the true freshman, Kamari Young on the 19 yard reception. Huge score with a minute and eight to go. We knew the mindset. They were thinking touchdown. They wanted the touchdown. And whenever they play zone, I said they uh, Stanley, Stanley attack seams. Attacks the seam of the zone. That is a touchdown. Great job by the freshman tight end from Tallahassee to extend over the goal line. The point after attempt is good, and God be high is celebrating after that Kamari Young touchdown reception here late for Florida AM. and And we talk about how they score, right? When they see zone, we've said this. These are the weak spots. When you see this cover three zone, right here and right here with a one high safety, there were two options open for him to throw the football. When you take a look, look at both seam routes. There's one at the top. And there's one at the bottom. Safety can't win. Put him in a bind. He stuck the football in there to the tight end. And that's where they've been getting him in that zone coverage. Nothing outside. They've always taken advantage of the seams. And that's one adjustment we did not see South Carolina State make. And again, you go back to just some of the key moments in this game. That interception that we talked about with South Carolina State giving them the momentum back. But the cel excessive celebration on yes. the end of that touchdown, which allowed, and the kick out of bounds, allowed them to start from the 50-yard line, so they had Absolutely. a much shorter field to work with. And once that happened, Coach Simmons' mindset changed. He went from, I'm not worried about tying this football game. I'm going to win this football game. You give me a quarterback that can throw, and I only need to go 50 yards with two and a half minutes? Oh, he was up for the challenge. Burroughs watches that one bounce into the end zone for a touchback, and Jay... Just over, just over three and a half minutes, we've seen 29 points scored combined with these two teams. And I think it goes back and it begs the question of can they finish late? Thus far, Florida A&M has answered yes to that question against Southern at home. A big game that night. Then Norfolk State, they won by two. And then last weekend, we mentioned beating North Carolina Central for homecoming. And that's what we said. Winning those type of games lets you know you've got a team that's not going to give up, that can face adversity and will find a way to win. Can they find a way to hold on now? A little pressure, a little time as Corey Fields with nowhere to go and brought down from behind. Big defensive play here from the Rattlers and the Bulldogs spend a timeout. That was Elijah out. Richardson right South there Carolina chasing State. Fields down. Second charge timeout, another half. Showed up, and that's something seconds. where the freshman has to learn. Don't jeopardize taking a sack when you have an opportunity to get rid of the football. See, when you're in this type of hurry-up situation, look, 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 it's got to go. You can't outrun everybody. Just throw the ball out of bounds. And when you throw the ball out of bounds, the clock stops. Now you just had to use a timeout. Well, this really spurs some huge MEAC matchups that are on our way and on our air will be at Howard November 2nd and then Central and ANT. That's always a big rivalry weekend, the Ag Eagle Classic, along with the Florida Classic, both on November 23rd. You can catch them on our ESPN networks. Our ESPN I still want to see him get back to get rid of the football quickly. You don't have to get all the yardage back. A minute in college football is a long amount of time, especially with two timeouts. Get rid of the football. Second and 12, Corey Fields with nowhere to go, and some pressure was coming once again, and an incompletion. Now third and long once more. Ronaldo Flowers has been flying around these last couple of plays up front for the Rattlers. What we're seeing from Florida a and is playing that cover two, two safeties high, five guys underneath, not even looking for the run. And they're trying to crowd the line of scrimmage to make it tough on the freshman to get his pre-snap read. South Carolina State. What can they do? 
in and out of the hands of Will Vereen. Vereen would have had the first down. Instead, it brings up fourth and 12. So we saw the great consistency of Corey Fields when he came into the game on what could be the all-important final drive of the game. He's not been able to connect. Yeah, they changed up the defensive scheme to him. And it's kind of a confusing look right now. There are no defensive linemen in the game for Florida A&M. Well, they've got one, but the rest they got defensive linebackers rushing the quarterback, not allowing him to get a look. With this high cover, too, you want to try and find something in the middle of the field, but they've got Elijah Richardson, number 15, their linebacker, playing 12 yards back. Looking to convert their first fourth down of the season. Field right there and just dropped. And that'll do it. Right in the hands of Datron James. And James couldn't hold on to it. He had a little space in front of him. And that spoils what would have been a historic day for Buddy Pugh. But he has another shot next week and for the remainder of the season to try to catch 129. And Tough a look loss. of disappointment on the face of the Dean of Coaches in the MEAC on the other side. Willie Simmons is celebrating a huge road victory for the Rattlers. What a game. And I'll tell you what, MEAC football in 2019 is going to be one of the more interesting seasons we've seen. <laughs> You've got still have three legitimate contenders at the top, A&T, Florida and then Bethune-Cookman. And you may hear from the South Carolina State squad again. Keep in mind, they still play North Carolina a &T. We know whenever they get together with Bethune-Cookman, it's always a war. Willie Simmons can celebrate as his team gives him the best birthday present he could ever ask for. A conference win on the road and the best start for Florida A&M since 2009. The Rattlers win it late, 42-38. And Jay, your final thoughts on how this one ended? A fantastic football game, a throwback game, particularly in the fourth quarter. The lead changes, but you have to give credit for these Rattlers. They've learned how to finish off opponents, which was missing a season ago. How long will it go? We don't know, but. We've seen this act before, but I think, what do you call it, Willennium 2.0? That's right. It's scary for the rest of the conference. It may be better than the first Willennium. Five and one, as we mentioned, overall still unblemished in the Mideastern Athletic Conference. Both these teams put on a show, but at the end, it was Florida A&M coming out victorious for Jay Walker and our entire crew. I'm Tiffany Green saying so long from Orangeburg, South Carolina. The Rattlers strike and strike and strike again.